again, this time against Bristol Apache at home. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This game kicking off, obviously, last week. Both of these teams coming off of a loss with the Apache, a one-point game to the Rushmore Knights, 21-20. And the home team, the Oxford Saints, losing to the Hertfordshire Cheaters last week. Who's going to be able to transform that loss into a win here in Oxford to all Abingdon? I am joined, as I'm always, by Willie. Willie, how are you doing this fine day? I'm great, it's a fantastic state of football. It's really shaping up to be interesting, because obviously Rushmore one and one. Yeah. It certainly is, and it seems to be that Bournemouth are coming away with potentially being the team to beat here, or in this division. Well, we've, got, we've got to see, because obviously these two haven't won a game yet. One of these wins, you know, everybody's going to be on equal points going through. So the amount of points scored or points difference, whichever the way the league works it nowadays, is going to be vital. So one thing we can sort of take away, or a couple of things we can take away from the game with Oxford against Hertfordshire last week is Robbie Peel has got a cannon of an arm. They need to rein in a bit. D-line, very good. But as Willie was talking about last week, the special teams of the Hertfordshire Cheaters very much put the Oxford Saints into a difficult, difficult situation over and over again. Can they overcome it? Have they looked at the film uh, to try and compete against the Apache? Is they, thankfully, Oxford has have given us some stats, which we will refer to um, later on. But let's just see the opening kickoff happen, obviously. As you can see from how they're lining up, Oxford are going to be booting it first with 19 and 7. Luke Holloway in 7 and Nathan Lester in 19 back to receive for the Apache. So, yeah, so just to confirm, can you check that the audio? Oxford won the toss and have declared, and Bristol have elected to receive the ball. Just waiting for the referees to get set up. There we go. High kick. Beautiful kick. Fielded at the 10 by number seven. Luke Holloway's got it. Luke Holloway seems to... A little bit of a lane was forming, but <coughs> we go through. Hello, Coach Russ. Thank you for tuning in, Luke Malahan. Shouldn't you be at training for the Bombers, but here we go now. The first look now at the Apache offense. So Luke Holloway with the return out to the 34-yard line, first down. Number 17 at QB is Fen Trugian. So tight end to the left, two receivers to the right, single back. Pitch to the right. Oh, and he goes the through. Right. He goes through some ox. Oh. And we can see this week that it is number 28, not 26 yeah. or 20. Ed Green on the carry there. First down. Starting Ball's on the halfway line. Starting off well for the Apache. One play already, half at the field, cut in half. We saw, as I've been saying this since, the game with Oxford versus the RAF in the preseason. Oxford's D-line, I think it could be their strongest unit. Some big boys, some quick boys as well. So trips right, tight end on the left, single back. QB keeper. And he runs into an absolute wall of Oxford. James Chapman, the, the kits, the kits are similar, especially if you're looking at it through the camera. So Oxford in the, if people don't know Oxford in the white, Apache in the grey, very very light grey. Yep. Very light grey. 89 coming in for Apache. TJ Ajayi. Second down and eight. Two yard gain there by the QB. It was a wall of defenders. Two receivers to the right. Tight end on the right. Number seven goes in motion across the formation. We're going to have our first throw Swing from the pass. Apache. Oh! Oh, oh my lord. Oh. And number 54, just bouncing that in and out of his hands. Oh.
Definitely some height on that Oxford defensive line there. So third down and eight. Spread formation, single back. First pass. down, Anthony Apache. Up Looping in the air. Ball. Oh! Surviving the catch. Comes in, comes in on this play, immediately makes an impact. TJ Joy and oh, coach, coach was telling us TJ Joy, he's, he's an ex Hertfordshire cheater. So, change moved again. First down on the 30 yard line going in. Number eight, Ed Green comes out. Rain starting oh. here. Ooh. Pitch left to number 29. Number 29. Good tackle in the backfield by number 42 for Oxford. So second down on the long nine. He fakes up the middle. Green pass. Oh, oh. Tackle 23. <laughs> 23, absolutely floored him. Let's have another look at that. Number 23, Mateus Greco with absolutely swollen up gives Apache a loss of yardage TJ Jai cool seems to have to play he's back in he came in third down last time and made the play that allowed the Apache to have a first down let's see what the Apache cook up now spread number eight in the backfield oh there's a flag on the play. 54 from the Saints. Pointing. Always pointing. Good old Josh Ricketts. Number five for the Apache. Who is number five for the Apache? Da oh. Jack White. No, that's that's not Jack White. That's uh, Coach Flowers. Coach Flowers. Who? Coach four. The, the Gloucestershire Gladiators. Um... Obviously, I'm not going to say anything about that. So, loss on the play. Previous play, but penalty by the defence. Offside with contact, so it's a dead ball. Brings up third and seven. QB rolls out. Picked by number five for the Oxford Saints. He's still on his feet. Breaks some tackles. Finally brought down around about the 40 yard line. So Matt Parker for Oxford on the interception there. A short run to the outside there on first down. Apologies for any rustling. We just put some protection on the camera. There's a slight drizzle just coming in. Thought we were going to have a nice sunny day today, but it's overcast. So, second and nine. So, spread formation, single back. High snap, well taken. Well, the QB's down. 
Sacked by number 53 for the Apache. Josh Shepard there on the sack. So, third and 18 now from the Oxford 32 yard line. Sorry about some of those camera cuts, ladies and gentlemen. We're just trying to uh, levy our equipment from the rain. Better snap this time. QB rolls out. And peel. Oh, oh what a grab there by 18 of the Saints. It seems to be that, I, I said this last week, I think Peel has got, he's got the power. It's all about finding that accuracy as he finds Chris Cowley, number 18 for the Saints. So Chris Cowley there with the catch for Oxford. And Oxford have got momentum on their side. Seems <clears> like they're going to go for the, on, on the fourth and one. Yep, so they're lined up in the spread formation again, single back. Number 84 goes in motion. Run to the left there with no gain. It's actually been taken back a few yards. Great defensive read there by Bristol. So Oxford not able to capitalise on that turnover. So, Bristol first and 10 from the 43 yard line. Now, Coach Russ 36 for Oxford is Martin Fitzpatrick, but, but Sean Griffin is number 26 for the Apache. Coach so jet sweep, like number seven with the ball, turn to the outside. Ooh. Solid tackle in there by Oxford. Gain of four, so second and six. Correct that, second and five. Down box has just been moved slightly. Oh, ex ex Oxford Saint Sean Griffin now playing his former team for number twenty six. So trips left, single receiver to the right, single running back, looking to pass. Nice completion underneath there for number ten. Well, Trujan has the accuracy, and he's not scared to. Throw that, throw that ball short into coverage, getting a nice completion, making sure it survived the ground. That's what I was, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, so Freddie Marshall there, number ten for Bristol with the reception. First down, around right about the 27-yard line. Two receivers to the left, pitch to the left to number 29. Solid tackle oh. by number 23 for Oxford again. And number 23 for Oxford just lined him up, got nice and set ready, and just pounced at the opportunity to bring a man down. Mateus Greco again being a uh, defensive stalwart early here for the Saints. So here we go then, second down, no gain. Two backs this time. Number 29 runs off tackle. 23 had a chance at that one. He's still on his feet. Taken out of bounds by number 28 for Oxford. Went for the face mask, but 28 just had the angle, just managed to push him out. Dylan Walsh, number 28 there. 
good old 28 there. RAF Mustang, which is obviously very interesting when the RAF Mustangs came to town. Dylan Walsh having a flip side. Same with number 99 for the Saints, Ben Harris. So back to two receivers to the right, tight end. Number seven goes in motion to the left. Throw to number 10, still on his feet. Fighting for extra yardage after the catch. Josh Ricketts, why don't you grow up? Do you ever think about that? So first in goal from about the three yard line. So two tight ends, a single back, spread receivers. Number eight, QB keeps and dives. He stretches for the line. Doesn't. But he's whistled short. Doesn't look like he got it. Oxford says it's managing to push the QB very nice and laterally. I've already been um, mocked by the QB for the Reading Knights. Um, who plays uh, for Oxford. He's number 15. He's already uh, mocked me for uh, things that happened during a Reading Knights Gloucestershire Gladiators game. But I didn't play that game, ladies and gentlemen. I wasn't there. So, second down and two. Fentrudian. Apologies for pronunciations. Number 17 for Bristol at quarterback again. Got some move around it. Number eight takes it through. And there's a touchdown. There we go. And the Apache are the first team to get points on the board. So Ed Green with that touchdown, number eight for Bristol. Already quite an impressive first quarter. A turnover. Yep. Oxford couldn't make anything of it. Results in, a, results in a giving it straight back to the Apache. Going for it on fourth and one. And they've managed to take that turnover battle straight to the house. Not straight to the house, but to the house. So going for the two-point conversion. Man in motion. Changes direction. Throw to the deep corner. And it seemed to be that that ball was heading for... Number five, Flowers. Number five, but he slipped or was pushed or something along those lines and he just wasn't in the area. Now, where the two points become interesting for the Apache is the two-point conversion that they didn't get last week against the Rushmore Knights is what ended up costing them that game by a single point. Yeah, it makes all the difference, those extra points. It's often as well as when you make that decision to go for a field goal or you play the fourth down. Can I check the team sheet? Nick Newman, let me have a look for you. Yep, number 29, Nick Newman is number 29 for the Apache today. You've got number 7 and number 13 for the Saints. Back to receive. Reese Tresser and JK's back to return. Go. I was about to say that, but uh, yep. <laughs> Willie beat me to it. <laughs> Number 22 for Apache, ready to boot. Good ball. JK's has got it. He took it on the bounce there, looking for some seams. He breaks he one. To the outside. So, already a better return for Oxford than we saw last week. Hertfordshire were really, really strong on their lane running on the kickoffs. On this one, Drake Hay went off to his right. They got their room, came back to his left, made a reasonable gain. Looks like they're starting on their own 28 yard line, first down. So, spread formation, single back. 
Gooby looks and to throw out to the out. Oh! And Peel and Peel just throws that slightly behind his receiver, allowing an Apache player to get a hand on it. If again, tip drills, ladies and gentlemen. If you can bounce that ball up in the air, you can come away with a lovely interception. But I have to say, it did look like he was throwing that pass all the way. He didn't even look to his own receiver. He just threw the ball. I think he was expecting the receiver to be there. So either a lack of timing or a miscommunication. So second down, spread formation. Man in motion. It's going to be around the middle. Counter Double. run. Now, now number twenty nine for the four. Victor Ofo. He had quite a solid game last week. And Victor Ofo, he played his first game as a Saint last week. Last week. That's what it sounds. And he did make an impact in that game. He's going to be trying to. Trying to push the pace here for the Saints as they do have a third and I'll let Mike third be the and judge. Five. A third and five. On around about the 35, 33 yard line. They'll need to get to about the 48. So, same spread formation. Ofo in the backfield with the quarterback. Swing pass to number 13. Well tackled. Oh, number 12, Mike Waddington. Michael Waddington reading that perfectly and bringing on the punt unit now for the Saints yeah so that bubble screen was red all the way there so Luke Holloway number seven back for Bristol to receive the punt Bit of a high long snap there, but he gets the ball off. That's a very high punt. High punt, not much distance. Take Doesn't the... even cross the halfway point of the field. Now, field positioning, and I think, Willie, you'll agree with this, field positioning killed the Saints last week. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems to be that that, that punt there, I'm not <clears throat> I'm not saying it this deja vu, but it's, it's, it's obviously it's not what Oxford want, but it seems to me that could be a problem that needs to start being solved yeah. quicker. Ferrero Francisco there with the punt. Probably about a net of 10 yards in total with that bad bounce. So, again, Bristol starting in the Oxford half. First and 10 from about the 42. I see what the ref is saying. Thankfully, Oxford Saints, they gave us some some great some stats so if we so if you know sport tanks coming give us give us some stats Robbie Peel this is it you can see from the game so far it's not it's his completion percentage is 33 percent again I've, I've all of the games that we covered with 15 under center for the Saints definitely the power the ball looks good coming out of his hands but sometimes it just can't find the receiver so here we go then Takes the dive, swing pass to number seven. Ooh. Heavy tackle by number three Let's there. Let's have another look at that. So Ian Hiscock on that tackle there. Ooh. Oh, dragged him. Oh, dragged him down. Still a good gain for the Apache of, I'm going to say five. What's yeah, second and five. Beautiful. So two receivers to the right, a tight end and a receiver spread out left. Number 29 in the backfield for Bristol. Looking to pass. Swing pass again, too far in front of number 29. Nick Noonan there tried to dive for it, but he just couldn't manage it. We think it's a kite, it's hunting in the bird of prey, hunting in the woods just to the back of the um, the field here. Sorry ladies and gentlemen, this, bird is, this bird's massive. This bird is... So here we go then, we'll third get, we'll, get, we'll get back to football. Oh. 
What's, no flags as of yet. I can't see any. Okay, so we're having a discussion there. So, so it's Woolly. What, what do you do there? There's obviously the, the, the defense went. Looks like the defense went into the neutral zone and then got back, and an offensive player flinched. So if they get back before the snap, then it'll be a false start on the offense. Well, here we go. This is this is very interesting. I've, I've not seen that before. Has Flowers done anything yet? Well, yes, Coach Belly has. He uh, he fell on the floor for a two point conversion, and the ball was thrown where I imagine he would would have been, but um, he wasn't there. So, other than that, I've not seen anything of um, number five of the Apache. And Josh Ricketts, I'm not responding to that uh, because I'm not responding to that uh, nickname. So there we go. Because he was defender in the neutral zone and the offensive player reacted... Even though there was no snap, then it's, it's called offside by the defence. Very, very interesting. It's, it looks like that's going to be a first down for the... There we yep. go. Yep, chains are on the move. Thing is, we've got people, 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 arguing that, uh, people arguing that call in the comments, but I will listen to Woolley on all, ma all matters rule related 17 gives it to 8 oh solid tackling again there by the Oxford defence 42 and 43 on the tackle because the offensive player was threatened and reacted when they were in the neutral zone that's why it's called offside by the defence if a different player on the offence had reacted then that would have been called a false start number 42 there Aiden with the tackle Matt Kersey, formerly of the London Blitz B and the Oregon Panthers. Very nice. Interesting. Very good. Okay, so second and six. Two tight ends, single back. Fumble. Oh, no. no giving it to number 29. That. Or 19. That's 19. <laughs> Fumble? Where do you where do you see Number, fumble? The, Q, the QB faked the fumble there, fell to the ground after the handoff. And I, very, I got sold on it. So it's nice. very good. But Nathan Lester picking up a good chunk of yardage for the Apache puts them in a very manageable, looking like a third and two. So it brings it down to a third and two. Yeah, I got completely sold on the action of the QB <laughs> it, there. It happens, it happens. I've <laughs> I've done it last week. I was watching for the run, but it, it was a run to the other side. So, the two receivers to the right, tight end and a receiver left, single back. Looking to pass again, That's deep a, to the corner. And that is... Picked again. And that is another pick for the Saints, it looks like. Let's have a look on our camera. You've got number five, Coach Flowers fighting for the ball. I mean, that looks like on our cam, that looks like an interception for Oxford. That looks like an int for, for Oxford for me. But I'm not a referee. And there we go. And that's yep. another turnover for the Saints. The Saints defense, they're doing two turnovers and we're still in Q1. Field position isn't fantastic for the Saints, but two turnovers in one quarter, that's... That is, I mean, that's good. That's great. That's exactly what the Saints need. But again, they need to capitalise on the momentum that they've got. Well, it looks like that. It looks like that was being called a touchback and they're setting up on the 20-yard line. Well, a touchback. Considering that all season there's been four interceptions for the Saints to add, an, uh, to add even more on this game in the Q1 but it's out oh there, see this is this is what happens this is what happens the Saints will get that momentum and then something will happen and good like better field positioning has just become worse for the Saints second and 19 
And it was strange the direction the ball came out there. It looked like a direct snap and it just went off to the side. It must have ricocheted off the quarterback or the running back. So here we go then, second and long. And the bass is batted again. down. And it seems to be that the Saints have got it. The Saints have recovered it again. Forward pass incomplete. It was batted down by the defender, so. Here we go, who was that? So I th number 66, Connor Folds. That was a great dive from Connor. Not needed, but again, the momentum. It's now no longer in the favor of the Saints, I'd argue as they've got a long way to go to get this first down. Looks around a third and 20 now. So spread formation. We know Peel's got the power to make a long throw, but can he have the connection? Receiver goes in motion to trips to the right side. The offensive left. Looking to throw. Over through 13 and two defenders for Bristol nearly had a chance on that one. So fourth down now and punt in formation. This is where we want to be seeing a, a really good punt from Ferreira Francisco. Looks like he's lined up close to his own end zone. Ferreira, Low snap. And Ferreira High kick. Better distance on it. Ferreira. Oh. A better punt this time. So G Millet number nine for the Apache is Kieran Boyce. Now, number 44 yard line going in for uh, Bristol. Now, number 12, the kicker for the Saints is also their backup QB and also the Reading Knights quarterback, Francisco Ferreira. Ferreria, sorry. Apologies, I've been saying it the wrong. I'm used to the rosters being in reverse. So it's Francisco Ferreira, not Ferreira Francisco. <laughs> My apologies. And we got, an, and honestly, a very entertaining first quarter from both teams. We've had the ball flying out for Oxford to manage and to recover. Two turnovers. However, it still stands that the Apache are six points up after missing a two-point conversion as the rain starts to trickle down here in Oxford. If you hear the sound of rustling plastic, that's not, strangely, that's not me eating some crisps. That is, in fact, me having to get round the plastic sheets and all of our lovely equipment. I'd argue if you're the Saints defence here, you're feeling good. You've you've come away with some great plays already. Yeah, so coming out with a trips formation to the left for Bristol. Ball's out, ball's out. And, and the uh, and the Saints get the ball back again. And that is that is the third turnover for the Oxford Saints already. Already, that, if you're the Saints, you've got to be feeling good. But again, it goes back to what I've been saying: the Saints, when they get the momentum, sometimes they just, they just squander it. But and it's happened multiple times in this game. Can they do something with it now to put points on the board as they get the ball back? So they're improve? starting this drive in the Bristol half. They certainly are. Looked like a miscommunication between the QB and the running back there, and the ball bounced off the running back's hands. We know that this, we know the Saints can kick as well. Peel fires it to Stancomb, 88, and he's got some yardage. Oh! Solid hit there at the end. It's 
Gain of about five on that pass play. So spread formation, number 36 in the backfield for Oxford. Looking to pass, swing pass to 36, too high. So, Martin Fitzpatrick there, number 36. Boy, is third and six, third and seven, Mike? Third and six, yeah. Third and six. Two pass plays already on this, already on this drive so, so far. Victor Ofo's now come back into the, the backfield for the uh, Saints here. 84 in motion. motion. Counter run. Well read by number 19. We had correction number 15 for Bristol. And we had coach Russ Begby with us last week and I asked him what he what would he like to see from this Saints offense. And he said establish that run game more. It seems to be happening. But with two in two passes that didn't really go any for, anywhere for the Saints could be another time to sort of institute that run game. The run game last week was pretty strong, but they were always in a bad position. I I'd, I'd want to see let's pound it 29 Victor Ofo was a, a good solid runner. And they're staying oh. on for fourth down here. Ofo is back in. And the hard count. Yeah. Very, very in. <laughs> very, very in. Very, very interesting from, this, from the Saints. We saw it a few times last week from both Hertfordshire and Oxford. But this could result in some... Uh, this is my fourth game now commentating on Sport Tank, and I think my word is hard count. Every game we've seen the Solent Cambridge game, both sides were using it to a good effect. Hard count and kick catch interference are the, <laughs> are the, are the um, catchphrases for Woolley uh, in his commentary career as it stands uh, currently. <laughs> As a so, defensive line coach, I'll be shouting discipline now. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was, if you didn't hear that, that was um, <laughs> the whole defensive line there. And it brings up a first down. It's going good for Oxford. Swing pass. Oh. Again, it looks like Robbie Pills just getting the ball and he's throwing it before he's even looking at his receiver. So, so Ben Harris, how would you feel about the defense? There was a quick uh, pass out to the receiver three, there. Three, three turnovers in less than, two, you know, one of the big quick, quarters. Too quick, too hard. For us. Um, no, but second down and ten. Offense, so we've got to focus, we've got to not concede this half. Red formation game, again. Give our offense the best opportunity to crack on. Cool, thank you, Ben. Receiver in motion. Going all the way across the formation into a trips. Peel fires a rocket. Caught by 84. And he gets he gets past number 22. The ball, the, ball. Out, the ball is out. The ball is out. Let's see. And that and there's another turnover in this game. And the Apache looked to come away with the ball. I've not seen a ref signal, but considering the Apache offense is coming onto the field, I imagine that they have seen one. The referee has signalled uh, Bristol Bull right from the... The line judge was right on the spot there. What's that? Four, five? Four, five turnovers. Four turnovers. Four turnovers already. Oh, uh, Tom Hatton, in regards to uh, the Norwich Women's Tournament, um, message the page and I'll get back to you. Okay. So, Bristol back with the ball. First and ten, their own 45-yard... Sorry, 35-yard line. Two receiver set, two tight ends. Oh, good blocking. Number eight had some good blocking oh. there, but he is. Oh. Solid tackle by 23 there, but a great run by number eight. Ed Green for Bristol there. Mateus Greco again making the tackle. A fantastic, fantastic player. Played for the Argentinian national squad as well. Yeah. So temporary pause while we've got a player down. Okay. 
So, slight delay there, one of the offensive linemen for Bristol. Has he got to play down on a try and find you some scores? Because the late kickoff, we very well could have some. I know that <sighs> while we were while we were sat here, I was uh, having a having a gander over at the Nottingham Caesars versus Sheffield Giants game. We've got Glasgow Tigers 40, Inverclyde Goliath 0. That game was yesterday. Let's have a gander. I'm going to try. So, Nottingham Caesars 38, Sheffield Giants 0. So, players up and off the field under his own steam. Dan Fan, why is, why is Connor Fan not on? I don't know, I'll try and spot him for you. Number 24 of the Apache. So, first and 10 from the halfway line for Bristol. Good snap. Run by, Run number, by seven. number seven off oh! the right hand side. Still on his feet. Oh, Luke Holloway. Big, big run. Dragging Oxford players to the floor. Ben Harris, number 99 for the Saints there. Gain of eight on the play, second and two. So spread formation for Bristol. Number eight, Ed Green in the backfield for Bristol. QB drops back. He's under pressure and he's swamped. 44 for the Saints coming up with the QB in his hands. So loss of four on the play. Third down and five. Alex Ross, number 44 of the Saints, swallowing that up. We called his, his name last week a few times for some solid tackling. Certainly, certainly did. So third and five, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Runs off the left-hand side, number eight. Stiff, oh, arms. stiff arms, two oh. stiff arms. Oh, and he's got space. Down to the 20. Number eight is going in for that TD. Bang! And another TD for the Apache. Number eight, they're just running over people, getting hands on the helmet, invoking Derek Henry of the Tennessee Titans to push people to the floor and Gonna be interesting to see what they do here. The um, two point didn't work last time for them. So 45 yard run on that touchdown. Oh. So this time they are setting up to kick. Number 22. James Bain. Little chip, and it's good. That's through the upright. So turnovers really have been the story of this game so far in Oxford. So. 
13 to nil. 10 14. Apologies for any language, obviously it's an active sport and coaches and players get passionate. But lots. Both teams turning the ball over multiple times here. Though it is only the Apache who've been who've managed to take that momentum forward and convert those into points. 13-0 as it stands. Low kick. Dre Cage has got it. 13. Dre Cage out of bounds there. Catching it on the bounce again. But a solid return. A solid return again. Getting better field position than they did last week. That's one positive that we can take away here for the Saints. As it stands, 10 minutes left to go or so. Or so. Yeah. About 10 minutes left to go in the second quarter. But first and 10 from their 35 yard line. So two receivers left, tight end and a receiver on the right. Keep an eye on 29, the running back for the Saints. Oh! And two not... Bristol players had a chance at that one, just over the hands of 22. Aiming, peel there, aiming for Reese Chesser. But unfortunately, but he almost got Kieran Boyce, number nine of the Apache instead. So second down. <laughs> Looking to pass again. Ooh, ah. Low and behind number 84 there. Number 39 for the Apache. Speeding it to the QB. Chesser comes back on. So again, we're seeing this preference for the passing play. Third down and 10, still on their own 35 yard line. Spread formation. Counter run. Red all the way. 98 and 54 of the Apache. Chris Hutchinson, number 98, and Alex Moorfield, number 54, both there. Right, counter play red all, the t all, all too easily. Tam Sosa in the comments tell us that he can he can even see the QB the QB's reads from through the camera but so Oxford Shield punt from their own 31 high snap oh better that, distance this time that's a good kick and it's rolling Great kick from Ferreria there, number 12. Now we saw, we saw him come in for the QB position at Oxford last week. So Bristol taking over on the 40 yard line. Mateus Greco, number 20. There's Balls a ball out. on the ground. 23 on And Mateus Greco comes up with a ball again. And it's another turnover for the Oxford Saints. Another one. Another one. And I'm going to say it again after every Saints turnover. Momentum is on their side. Can they capitalise? The field position is good. The field position is good for the Saints. I was just about to say, Mateus Greco, he came into this game with eight solo tackles, two assists, 
fantastic perform fantastic performance from number 23 of the Oxford Saints today. He has come to play. Fifth turnover. Fifth turnover in this game. Good field position for Oxford about go. the 35 yard now, line. Here we go. I just said this. Ferraria is in the game at quarterback number 12 and he throws the ball away. Very interesting I said that. It's almost like I know what I'm doing sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. The Reading Knights QB number 12 is in for number 15, Robbie Peel. Problem is from a defensive coach, I'm seeing pass on first and second down and then they're running on third. Um, for the defence, that's an easy read. Let's, let's get some running plays off this... Um, First number, or second down. The number 36 in the backfield for the Oxford Saints. Martin Fitzpatrick. QB keeps up the middle. Oh. And slides. And great stuff from Ferry. Now, he was... I've got some beautiful statistics here. He's already ran for 41 yards. Be interesting to see how much that adds onto his top. He's already ran for 41 yards so far this season. And he's not been in for the full games. So third down and a long three, maybe four yards. So there we had the, 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 the passing play, the defensive line bit on it and the hole opened up right up the middle for Ferreira to run on that short slide. So twins to the left, single receiver. Swing pass. And it's caught by 81. Caught by Dan Britton there. Looking for the spot. It's close to the first down. Let's see where the chains move to here, ladies and gentlemen. And that is a first down. And momentum is cooking here for the Saints. You have to correct me. I think, is, is this actually their first first down? I don't think it's their first first down. It's it, definitely, just seems, it seems that they've been very few and far, few and far between. That's for certainly Oxford. that's certainly been the case. So on the twenty-four yard line going in, Fitzpatrick in the, formation. Fitzpatrick in the backfield, number thirty-six for the Saints. Seems to be some movement there. There is some laundry on the field. So hard count again there. QB was contacted and dropped the ball but I've got a feeling we're going to get a dead ball a five yard penalty against Bristol there we go and that's a gain of five on the penalty for the Saints definitely their best field position so far in this game Yep, round about the 20 yard line. So first down and five. Spread formation, number 36 in the backfield with Ferreira. Looking to pass. Number 18 up the sideline. And that's. Stopped short, but it looks like a first down. And that's certainly close. And the Saints are cooking. The momentum has finally. And the Saints calling a timeout, but momentum is definitely. Picking up here for the Saints. They've managed to their fourth turnover and they've now managed to capitalize on that, obviously. Well, I'm saying capitalize, but they are very, again, best field position, very, very close. Let's see if the Saints can put some points on the board. Last game they went without a touchdown. And they've and they're very, very, very close here. So Chris Cowley on that reception there, taking him into a first and goal. Looks around about the five yard line. We're at the opposite end of the field, so you've probably got a better view from the central camera than we have. So, double wing, one receiver goes in motion. So it wasn't a, a man in motion, it was a 12th man running off the field. <laughs> But luckily they've called the timeout before the referees have thrown a flag on that one. Saving their field position for the Saints there. Uh, 
So QB is under center, and we've got tight bunch. One receiver goes out, number 18. Oh. The referee's over having a discussion with the coaches on the Bristol sidelines, and that's why the whistle's blown. They're not ready for play. That man in motion's going to get real tired. He's running those little short routes, ready to get set, but it's just not happened for them yet. Yeah, that's Chris Cowley again. It's a <laughs> Tam Sosa, that's number 12. Francisco Ferreria, the starting keeper for the Reading Knights, is number 12. Tam Sosa singing his praises already. So it seems we had a delay of game for the Saints. Pushing them back five yards. No, it wasn't a delay game. It was a legal procedure because they snapped the ball when the referee hadn't signalled it ready for play. He was over talking to the Bristol coaches. And he's just come over and explained it to the same to the Oxford coaches. So because they snapped the ball when it wasn't a ready for play, which means the referees weren't in position, five-yard penalty replay. So and that's why it's a goal from the 10. That's why it's always great to have Willie here to, to give, uh, give us rules like that. Let's have a look what they do here. Gonna be a pass. High. High ball. But a flag. Flag comes in late. So we'll go, the pass was going into the corner to Chris Cowley. But there looked like there was contact between the defensive back and Chris. Looks like it's number nine of the Apache that that flag very well may be on. Kieran Boyce having putting his hands up to his helmet in disbelief. I believe that there was contact while the ball was in the air between number nine and 18 for Oxford. Let's see what the refs are going to say here. A holding call on the Apache yeah. there. So that's what they're saying is that contact was before the ball was in the air. Delaying him from getting out. So that's why it's a holding call, not pass interference. But it's Martin Fitzpatrick runs it up the middle. In. Yes, touchdown. And that is a TD for the Oxford Saints. Finally managing to capitalise on a turnover. And not only that, that was their fourth, fourth turnover. Fifth of the game, but fourth turnover for the Saints. They finally managed to put six on the board. Yeah, so as I was saying briefly, holding is before the ball is actually in the air, pass interference when the ball's thrown. It's still a 10-yard penalty and an automatic first down for the offence, but it was half distance. So, number 82 on to kick for Oxford. Joe Newton Green ready to kick. And that is through the uprights, and that makes this game 7-13. to 13. As we're being told in the comments, oh my lord above. I didn't see this coming. In this division, these two teams, they've got to meet these teams. Currently at half time at South Wales Warriors, 13. Bournemouth Bobcats, zero. I was saying at the very beginning, people are turning around. They're going, everybody's going to end up one and one after this. It's going to be a really tight. Very, very interesting. Out of South Wales. I believe that's South Wales' first game as well. I, 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 think, I think it is, yes. I stand to be corrected, or we do. So, number seven back for Bristol on this kickoff. 7 and 19 back. The ball's falling off the tee. So he's reset the ball on the tee. If the ball falls off a second time, then they are required to have somebody actually hold it. And Newton Grain with a, with a ball, and that's a great ball. 
And they're going to let that go for a touchback. Are yeah. oh, the Apache. Solid kick off there. Coach Russ, who was with us last week, telling us that the Cheetahs will be going to South, uh, South Wales next week. Very, very, in, very, very interesting, that scoreline. Very, very interesting. OK, so here we go then. First and 10 from the 20 for Bristol. But as it stands here, we are back in Oxford for this. So two wide receivers, two tight ends. One on the tight end shifts across. Oh, they tried to counter again to number eight, but he was swamped. He turned back and ran back into defensive linemen there. Good defensive line play. A great defensive line play. And it just seems that Mateus Greco is all over the field. All over the field. Stuart Rees commented on number 12 for uh, the Saints there being the difference maker. Potentially, potentially... Uh, Ferreira's putting in his resume to... to uh, did you to, say Stuart Reese To start this team. I did say Stuart Reese. Quarterback previously for Portsmouth Dreadnoughts. Oh, very nice. So There's, here we go. Second and 13. Oh, right, right off to the right. Very horizontal good solid running. blocks there. Goes past number five. Great pursuit from number five of the Reading... Of Reading Knights. Oxford Saints. Sorry, I was too busy <laughs> thinking about the Saints number 12 there. Yeah, so a gain of six, but it was good contain on the run. Third down and about six on the play. Matt Parker there, number five, former Bangor Mud Dog. Actually, he might not be former. He might still be playing for them. I don't know. I've not asked him. So here we go then. Third down play for Bristol. Two wide receivers. Number seven's lined up as they've got two wing backs. Run right. Run by number oh, eight. Number eight, a man with a TD and a big stop here from Oxford. You know, you know, I don't want to jinx it for Oxford, Oxford but fair. Bill Hansen there, great tackle. F fair play to Oxford. Fair play to them. The momentum is on their side and they're beginning to be able to, to capitalise on it. Fair play to the Saints as that is a full... A fourth for the Apache in deep in their own territory. So with a, with a punt, it's under five minutes left in the in the half. Number seven's back for Oxford. I want to say number 19 for the Apache, looking to boot that away, Nathan Lester. Number 49, sorry, high kick. Takes an Oxford bounce. Takes an Oxford bounce there, bring it back. Yeah, so it looks like around the 40 yard line going in for Oxford. Five minutes and two timeouts remaining. Another Gloucestershire Gladiators coach number 49 with the kick there. Oxford. Starting in Apache territory, as number twelve is the man, un, the man in the backfield, the, the quarterback again. Looking to pass on first down, rolling out, throws it away. So again. P passing on first down. If they go to the pattern, it'll be a pass on second down and a run on third down. Let's need to change this up a little bit because I think Bristol will be key on, on this. Defense. Or maybe in, even the draw play again. We've, we, when in, Ferreira went up on that single solo run up the middle earlier. So, spread formation. Single back off to the right, motion man, number 18. Oh, 
Fakes he rolls out to his left. Oh, and just, just out of the hands of number 88. Just out of the hands of Stancom there. Just a few, a couple of inches maybe in a bit. And that's going to be a big completion for the Saints as it's now third and ten. Again, from a defensive point of view, as soon as he came out, got the snap in his hands, he's looking left. He never looked right once on that one. So let's see what they can do. Third down on the 40-yard line. Spread formation, single back. Number 18, Cowley goes in motion again. Trips to the left now. Looking to pass. Wobbly throw. But number 22 of the Apache just can't come away with the ball. James mm. Baines, close to the ball, but not quite there. And 81, Dan Britton was the target there. So fourth and 10. qb has got a play from the coach. Back into the huddle. So, spread formation, single back. Looking to pass, looking to his left. Long, deep throw. Oh. Contested ball by two. Very, very well done by the Apache. Getting the ball back here, Dona. I'm going to assume there's going to be, the ref's going to point us in a second and say that there's not too much time remaining, but the Apache. So first down from the 40 yard line going out for Bristol. In the momentum meter I've got in my head, I still think that it's currently on the Oxford Saints. Well, if they get a defensive stand here, they can still got on the opportunity to get points before the half. So, spread formation for Bristol, single back. Number seven goes in motion on the orbit route. Swing pass to number seven, he catches it but can't keep his feet. So the orbit motion there, where is where the receiver goes behind the quarterback rather than the jet motion across in front of the quarterback. And Luke Holloway had the ball in his hands, but he was sort of falling over as he caught it, and then Mate Mateus Greco is there to... It looks like second and 18 now for the big loss on that pass. Oh. Again, momentum for Oxford. Now, Fentrugin, 17, the man under centre for the Apache. Run up the middle. Number eight is stopped. Solid wall by the defensive line. And Ed Green just could not get anything going for the Apache there. Third, and I'm going to say 15. I Will agree with you. Yep, yeah, very good. I always, <laughs> I, I always say it... Um, as if I'm guessing, because Willie will know much better than I do. Obviously, as I say, we're down by the opposite 20-yard line and the, the camera, you're seeing most of the views on the halfway line. Yeah. But we're... So, third down and long. Like I say, stop here for Oxford, punt, and then they've got another opportunity. So, two-minute warning. So, okay, so here we go, long third down, spread formation, single back. Tried the hard count there, we got a late flag. There's a dump off there by number 17. So just going to swap cameras for to a see second. see what the flag is. Help. 
So it was a very late flag, but they called it an offside on the defence there. So it puts Apache in slightly better stead, but they're still going to have a third and long. Ball's out around the 39 yard line now. Trips to the left, single receiver to the right. Drops pass. And Trujillo Trujillo is swallowed up by Ben Harris, number 99 for the Saints. Clock is still running, but it's, it seems as though the ball is going to be going back still running. into the hands. <laughs> Get, I'm getting a shout out from Ben Harris, who's on the field. Um, So, Bristol taking their time on this punt. Obviously, the clock's running inside the two-minute warning. I believe Oxford only have one timeout remaining they as well. They have two timeouts they have remaining. See, and that's why Willie said, keep me in check. Keep me in check. Make sure that I'm not talking nonsense. So. Bargains with a punt. Takes a slight Bristol bounce. 34-yard line. So 58 seconds remaining and two timeouts. I'd have probably used one on the punt there to give you a bit. So the ball's on the 34 yard line. Let's see what Oxford can do. Now Oxford do have a good kicker in Newton Grain number 82. So even if they can just Those. get get this ball in kicking territory could be points on the board for Oxford so spread formation 84 comes in motion sorry 88 Stankham sets up into a trips formation swing pass to 29 and he makes a big break and he's down the middle oh my lord oh my lord and this is good this could be going all the way for Oxford and that is gonna be a touchdown for the Oxford Saints they told us number 29 was dangerous, and he certainly is there with 58 seconds left on the board for that play. That is going to be another touchdown for the Oxford Saints. And ladies and gentlemen, this game is almost, almost, no, it is tied. It's, yes. It is tied. This game is tied. Tied. And Oxford are kicking the point. And Newton Grain is going to be looking to put the Oxford Saints in front. Sorry we didn't get that, ladies and gentlemen. We're having to use the camera up here, as I'm sure that you'd very much like to see this kick as well. Bad snap. Bad, bad snap. Rolls out. He's looking to pass. It's and intercepted. It's intercepted. And it's intercepted by the Apache. They've managed to stop number 22 there. So with a bad snap... This game is now tied. The Saints can't get the ball off. The Saints can't get the ball into the hands of the holder properly enough. But this game is tied. Very interesting. Very, very interesting here in Oxford. What a run by number 29 of the Saints. Victor Ofo there, 46 yard, sorry. 56, 66 yard line. 66, 66 yard touchdown, they get there in the end. A 66 yard, and was, I have to say there was some interesting blocking and two Bristol players <laughs> did take themselves out, each other out on that play. Here's the Vic Victor Rufo came into this game with 46 yards, having only played last week. But that's that we're going to have to get a new stat sheet for next week because he's been popping off.
So number seven back again for Bristol. It's a chip kick. Fielded at the front line and recovered by Bristol. Ball was close fun out there. The Oxford defense. The Oxford have got to be feeling good. Like, let's, I was going to say the Oxford defence have got to be feeling good. Oxford have got to be feeling good. Real good. They may not be going into the half in the lead, but they've pulled it back. Lots of coaches use cliches at half-time about what the score is and how and they they're going to play the second half. Oh, so. They all go into it saying it's nil-nil, but it's 13-13 in Oxford. Unless the Apache can do something special here. So the Saints were one bad snap away from taking the lead into the, or one good snap away from yeah. taking the lead at home. So Bristol on their 40 yard line. They've got all three of their timeouts remaining. Now Stuart Reese tell us saying momentum in Oxford's favour. I could not agree more. I could not agree more. QB now, keep. Now, a different QB, number 19, he's fast. He's but at he's the out, he did get out of bounds. It's a gain of about seven there. Now, the new man under centre for the Apache is Nathan Lester. No, they've marched him all the way, but only a gain of two. Looked like a much better game from our sideline. So, second and eight. Second and eight, clock stopped. Leicester got out of bounds, but he's still in at QB. Seven in motion. There's a fire. Oh, it's another, it's another fumble. Oh, this is, it, it's recovered by the Apache. So Nathan Lester there, number 19, recovers his own fumble. Setting up a third and 13 in the dying seconds of the second quarter. So timeout called. I think by Oxford, obviously being the third and three. Uh, third and so, see what they can, Bristol can do on this play. And he runs to his right, looking to pass downfield, throws. And that is caught by... Caught right on the sideline near the first down mark, waiting for a signal. Yep, that's the first down for the Apache. Very, very interesting. Great conversion from the Apache, Great. though. Great conversion. The, D, the DB was there as well. It was one of those 50-50 balls, but... First down for Bristol. Didn't, I didn't see if the referee signaled that is out of bounds, but there seemed to be no rush from Bristol. So, there we go. Yeah, so it was inbounds and the clock was running there. Oh, that's very interesting. Maybe, the, maybe did, the, did the Apache not know? But so, refs are having a, a talk. We imagine about the clock. The, the, play look, the play looked like you caught the play, the pass inbounds. Certainly did. So the, the clock would have continued running. So we'll just see. <clears throat> okay, so they, they are saying it was out of bounds and that there are six seconds on the clock. So the call goes in Bristol's favour there. Six seconds. Coach Russ, there you go. Six seconds. Stuart Reid, Stuart Reed, the last um, score I had for OVE versus Hereford, OVE were up by seven, if I recall correctly. But that was a while ago. 
27-14 is Overy versus Hereford. I'm pleased to play for the Eagles. Come on! I've got friends who play for Hereford. Come on, East Valley! <laughs> Sorry. We'll get back to this game, yeah. but I'm so happy about that. We do love non-biased commentary. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, but if, if OVE beat Hereford, I'm going to absolutely crease. So from the nature... 14 currently to OVE. <laughs> Come on. So I think Oxford called the time out there for a bit of confusion with players. So, first and ten for Bristol, six seconds remaining. And a great, what they can do. a great water bottle heave there from someone. Absolutely launched it. <laughs> so, a little bit of insight there from the team photographer about the defence that's been called. <laughs> Could be the last play of the half here for both of these teams. What can the Apache do? Lots of pressure. And Ben uh, Harris, Ben Harris got his hand around the ankle of 19. So Let's, that sack brings up the half time. And ladies and gentlemen, what a second quarter for the Oxford Saints. Coming, coming back, this game is 13-13. But you have got to say that the tale of this game so far is turnovers. There have been five so far four for the oxford saints one for the apache two interceptions for the saints two fumble recoveries for the saints 13 13 momentum is on the side of the saints and they seem to be able to capitalize oh this is a this is a good game i like this game i like this game a lot and oxford <laughs> and oxford <laughs> received the kick <laughs> hey, uh, head coach of Oxford there um it, your head coach Oxford he's ready he he's pumped up for this and so they should be Oxford doing very well that sec that second quarter belonged to the Oxford Saints <laughs> and as I say the Oxford are going to get the ball first in the second half because they deferred their option I'd say it's it's almost I'm not ready to say it's definitely night and day from last week but comparatively to last week one word field position field position has not killed the saints this week absolutely fantastic performance let's i'm gonna try and give you some scores as we go into no i know no i know no i know <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and get you some scores so far around this league. I do know I'm excited for it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited for it. Number 27-14, as it stands, to um, to uh, Ooze Valley. Uh, okay. Let's try and get you some scores here. Turnovers, the name of the game so far for the Saints. And as... I'll try and get up for you, but last we heard it was 13-0 to the South Wales Warriors over the Bournemouth Bobcats. But let's have a look now. Colchester currently 17-8 over Sussex. Swindon 27-2 over the Torbay Trojans. Half time in Somerset versus Berkshire. 10 to Somerset. Let's see if we can get more on this game. Still, still half time. That was 30 minutes ago. Highland Stag 17, Roughnecks 0 at the half. And that's all of them that I have so far. And obviously Nottingham beat Sheffield earlier. But ladies and gentlemen, we are going to leave you for half time while we have some, uh, you know, discuss technical issues, discuss the game. You go and get yourself a cup of tea. Well, no. In fact, don't get yourself a cup of tea. Get yourself a hard-earned, refreshing beverage with who knows what percentile content. But ladies and gentlemen, it's a bank holiday and we are happy to have you here in Oxford. We're going to go for half time. We will see you in a bit. Oxford Saints, 13. Bristol Apache, 13. We will see you in a bit.
<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back here in Oxford. Hopefully, you have gotten yourself. <coughs> You've gotten yourself a drink of some sort on this bank holiday as... Short kick. Pretty short kick. Picked up... Downs it at the 27-yard line. And there we go, 89 of Oxford. Oxford, yep, down in the ball. As we are back here in what has been, genuinely, as far as I'm said, very exciting game. 13-13, as it stands right now, here in Oxford, with the Saints having control of the ball first. So the ball's been spaced on the 30-yard line. <clears throat> uh, we just saw another cameras, ladies and gentlemen, from our half-time break. So spread formation, number 25 in the backfield. Chris Cowley in motion. Sets up into the trips formation. Forever's got pass. it. Forever's running out. Low pass. Just off the hand. A low throw there from Ferreira. Off the hands of Kieran Boyce. Well, off the hand, not off the hands. Off the hand of Kieran Boyce. So just give a quick shout out to our officials today. Referee, Crystal Halverson. Umpire, Michael Helchrist. Down judge, Daniel Cold. And line judge, Mike Lefebvre. If you're interested in refereeing, Bafra.info. All the information will be on there. Second down and ten. Ferrer hands off. To Ofo. And Ofo, Ofo very smartly there. You see those putting that ball across just to get that extra bit of yardage. Six yard gain, yeah. Scott O'Neill keeping us in the loop currently. 7 0 to the London Olympians over at the Norwich. Anymore. Third and four. Spread formation. Francisco Ferreira in the quarterback position. Hard count. Free play. No, they've whistled it now. We've got a drop. So, looks like the hard count again there by the Oxford offence. Bring up a first down, referees are conferring. Okay, they've actually called it as a false start on the offence. So that'll be third and ten. Sorry about that, isn't it? I was dealing with some technical issues. Third and nine. So back in the spread formation. Low snap, looking to pass to number 13, too high. All over the head. Not the, not the start, the... Um Saints wanted, but there, but yeah, low snap there. We said about Connor Folds last week, he did tell me that he had in fact been to the gym, but just get your snapping down, Connor. I love him really. Now, Ferreira is so back to punt. Fourth and nine. High kick. Okay, distance from Ferreira. Oh, 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 oh. This could be I'm going to call that an Oxford ball. It was fielded by number seven and let's dropped. See, let's see. Oh, my good Lord above. And, there, and another quasi turnover has put the Saints in great field position. Oh, And, and it's mad because Ferreira punts the ball. He gets some yardage on it. All, all this yardage is, def is definitely coming. I'm going to sort of say at the hands of Ferreira. No wonder he managed to slug his way through beating the Gloucestershire Gladiators in the playoffs. But uh, we don't talk about that because I didn't play that game. This is huge for Oxford. It is. This is huge. A first drive in the second half that didn't go their way, but a, but a recovery. And now they're fifth. Fifth turnover, fifth turnover, fifth turnover. 33 yard line. Low snap again. Ofo breaks the first tackle, he's still on his feet. 
gets through number 53, Josh Shepard of the Apache to add some yardage. Or is that coming back? No, it's it's back. It's a loss of yardage. It's a loss like of yardage. Oh. Sorry, I mean, it's just the, the angle that we are, we stood at. Sometimes those horizontal runs can be a bit deceiving to our eyes. Yep. So again, stay with the spread formation. Ferreira at quarterback, Ofo at running back, off to the left. Good snap there. In the hands of Kays. Kays jukes a few people. And that's going to be another loss of yardage. Apache have come out of half time, swinging on defense. They're not going to let the Saints' momentum keep them down. But that is going to be a third and... 14. A third and 14. <clears throat> yeah, the Bristol read that bubble screen there nicely. Taking a lot of time here. They're going to want to get... They're going to want to, going to, want to get set up nice and quickly. And they do. So, spread formation... Looking to pass. Oh, and Ferreira, what a ball! Number 84. Oh, no way! And, and that's another touchdown. touchdown for the Oxford Saints! Oh, this game is interesting. And it's cool. And Ferreira with an absolute dart to number 84. Oh, what a dart. So, we did see a lot of practice with the snap and hold for this one during half time. Here we go for the extra point. 84, Dan Simons with the TD there. As Newton Grain looks to put this through. It's through. And it's good for the Saints. I tell you what, listen, this game is interesting we're gonna see the the apache offense for the first time tam so so he's calling his he's calling his shot here for number 12 ferreira to be the qb of the saints and we'll have to see where that lies going forward but <clears throat> yeah. we see we sometimes we talk about you know a turning point and it very well could be when at number 12 went under centre. Notoriously bad number for quarterbacks number 12. There's been no good quarterbacks who've ever worn number 12. <laughs> Not a single one. So, Oxford kicking off again. Number 7 deep for the Br Bristol. See if they can get some reasonable field position on this kick. Newton Grain, great, another great ball. Return by number seven. I want to say that's left. Still ball. on his feet. Luke Holloway even. And he is brought down by number 41 of the Saints, just shy of midfield. So it looks around about the 45-yard line, first and 10. Ethan not there with the tackle for the Saints. So they've got two wing receivers tight on the left-hand side, single running back. Run straight up the middle, number eight. And he's met, and he's he's met by Mateus well. Greco. Mateus Greco managing to grab around the knee and the ankle. And the, it's very difficult to survive someone who's dragging you down by the ankle, but that is still going to be a first down for the Apache. Yeah, see how they respond to that opening touchdown. So now at the 41-yard line, going into... 
for Bristol. So again, it's two tight ends, two wide receivers, single back. Looks to pass to number up. 10. Over the head and out of bounds. Okay, second and ten. So tight end to the left, two running backs. Stretch play outside and number Ed, eight. And Ed Green's running him out, he bumps into his own player. And the ball's loose! No! And it's oh caught by number 26! It looked like he tried to lateral the ball and it went into the hands of an Oxford player. Let's see if we can see that. Oh my god, and he managed to catch it! Who was that for Oxford? Number 26. And that is the sixth, the sixth turnover in favour of the Oxford Saints. This is Owen Morris, number 26. Oh my Owen Morris. And managed to come up with a ball. This is this is insane. This is insane for the Oxford Saints. I thought he tried to lateral that the way that that ball came out. I don't think that that's true, but I think it was punched out. But I couldn't see who oh, made the, made the Lord, punch. But it went straight to his hands. Ferreira in the backfield again. Looking to pass. Ferreira's looking. He's got some time. Rolls out. Throws across the middle to Drake. Oh, Drake is just. Just a bit short. Chubbers won, keeping us informed for the other game happening in this division as it stands. Bournemouth have got seven points back as it stands. South Wales Warriors 13, Bournemouth Bobcats 7 in Q4. So keep us updated on that one because I'm sure that these teams would like to know. I went, I'll let this play happen. So spread formation, single back, number 80 in the backfield now for Oxford. He takes the ball, runs up the middle, and he's completely stuffed there by number 98. They, the Apache saw that big man in the backfield, and they, they were taking no chances. It's number 98, Chris Hutchinson and 53, Josh Shepard swarming. You may remember that Bournemouth did come back against Rushmore. Rushmore went out ahead, and Bournemouth came back and won it late. So, Russ, Russ, Coach Russ, keeping us informed from... From watching this, ripped out by number 70 of Oxford was that ball. Great call, thank you. So, third and 15 now. Number eight, he's back still. Spread formation. Looks to pass. Throws outside to number 22, just out of his reach. So, fourth down. Punt team back on now for the Saints. And our white hat, hat ref, Krista, he's the only Tennessee Titans fan I've ever met. That's just a fun fact for you. Genuinely, I've never met another one, but he, but he, but he is. He is. I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. That's just an interesting <laughs> fact, I guess. Apparently, they had a good draft this weekend. I haven't actually caught up with anything yet on the NFL. Low so, snap. number seven's back again for the punt. He fields it cleanly. Blocks, gets rid of one guy. Number Ooh, six. Solid tackle. Number six and number 77 of the Saints. They're making sure that that ball does not go any further. Travis Falks, Travis Falks number 77 there from the Saints. So first and 10 from the 27 yard line for Bristol. Again, the, the story of this game, turnovers, number one, and field position. We talk about field positioning yep. a lot, and it's not working out for the Apache this week. I'm not, and as soon as I say that, this is going to go for a touchdown this play. <laughs> That's what your I've got. Your crystal ball's glowing, is it? So run up the middle. Short game there for number eight.
Ed Green being Number 64 definitely... and 70 on the tackle there for Oxford. Number 8, Ed Green for the Apache. Definitely the power running back. Definitely he's pushing it through. Second down and six then. <clears throat> Coach Russ keeping us in form. I, 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 love when, I love when Coach Russ gives us a little tips of information on what he thinks people should do. So keep, keep it up, I love it. Saying that number 12 should maybe run more. So, we've got a, a wing back to the right of the quarterback, running back behind the quarterback. QB keeps, rolls out to his right, is looking to pass. And he runs to the sideline. as Heads he, out of bounds. As a lot of Saints players run to the sideline, they're keeping him under pressure and he's ran, he's ran over the man with the uh, down marker. Chain crew Mike. Chain crew Mike, got to give a shout out. Everyone's saying, everyone loving Ferreira, number 12 for the Saints, but maybe we should run a bit more, but we, we've seen his running stats before this game. He's got quite a bit more now. 41 rushing yards over two games, but I don't think he started either of those games. So that's pretty good. So slight loss on that play, third and eight. The head coach of the Reading Knights, Rob Smith, must be loving this, but also Rob Smith, um, no one likes you. <laughs> no one at all. No one I've met has got any good things so to say about you. Here we go then. Wing back, tight in. Flares out to number 42 by the looks of it. They called it a backward pass. Ooh. What a, what a hit there. Heads up play from the Apache that didn't hear a whistle called, so keep the play alive. Yep, backward pass, can't, can't be incomplete. Ball hit the ground, 42 picked it up and tried to advance it. And just great from the referees as well. So, fourth and seven. Fourth and sevens. I'll call him. Co I'll call him Coach Huggins because he's my coach. He's back to kick. So number seven back for Oxford to the return. This. High snap. Bit of a high snap. Forty nine. A difficulty. Oh. Tries to run it. Oh my lord! Up this is by number forty eight for Oxford. And Huggins forty nine. He got that ball high and. There was just a glimmer of trying to make something out of it. And this is another absolute coup for the Oxford Saints to get that ball deep in Apache territory. 20-yard line, first and 10 going 20 in. 20-yard line. This is, this is absolute madness. This is madness here in Oxford today. So that's now the second punt that Oxford have taken possession. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that Chubba won. He's going to put it in the chat. The score for the South Wales Warriors Bournemouth game because... Interesting. Because if, if... Oh, my God. This, this division is about to blow up if it keeps going the way that it was. So Farrow's got the ball. Farrow's got the pass. Ball, rolls goes up right. to his right. There was no strength in that pass there. So, we'll slight call. pause there with one of the Oxford players needing a bit of attention. <laughs> so again, a great field position for Oxford on this drive. If they can capitalise on it. I'm waiting for Harriet Martin-Jones to keep me informed. <clears throat> Mavericks 38 nil against Ipswich full time. Andy Smith telling us, oh my lord, you're going to want to hear this one, Willie. Cambridge Cats 39, Solent 14, fourth quarter. Blimey. That's interesting. That's interesting. We've got some interesting scores going on. Clyde Valley Blackhawks 35 to nil. Oh, 42. Let's see. 42 to the Clyde Valley Black Hawks over the Dunfermline Kings and we're back to the scores that we read out earlier oh no we got we got one more Swindon Storm 39 Torbay Trojans 2 oh that Cat Solent score oh that's an interesting, interesting. one 
Cats came out very strong against uh, Solent in that first game, but their defense seemed to have tired oh, as the game went on. But that's a, that's a really, really interesting score, that one. Oh, 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 my Lord. Oh. Sport Tank will be at Solent next week for the Solent versus London Blitz game. So, second spread formation, twin bunch, and we've got a false start on the far side. So Oxford lining up there with two receivers on each side, but in that bunch formation to try and confuse the defensive backs. But one of the receivers went a little bit too early, I think. Yeah. yeah Tab, I don't think there's a stream for the Solent game, but there will be next week. There we go. Yep, so five yard penalty for the false start, second and 15. Spread formation, number 36 in the backfield with Ferreira. Bit of a low snap Goes deep to the Drake in the end zone and he's called it. Oh my lord, let's have a look. I'm waiting for the call. And it is a touchdown. And that's another touchdown for the Oxford Saints. Oh my lord, I cannot believe this. That is another six points on the board for the Saints. Oh, this, oh, 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 this game is, it's, the rain's sort of trickling down, but when it hits this field, it's immediately sizzling. <laughs> no. Oh. Setting up the kick, the extra point. Newton Grain going back for the kick. When the snapper's been good and the holder's been good, he's been banging it through these uprights. Let's see what he can do here. Good snap, good hold. Oh, and it's slipped. Up. But it's, it's blocked. Blocked. It's blocked, but it's still good. And the Oxford Saints have now almost... have more than doubled the score as it is 27 26 to the home side here sorry we've just got an injury at the moment Oh, did I say 27-26? You said 27-26. Oh, yeah. that's, sorry, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I'm just confused. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. We're having, we're having, a, we're having a break there. You, you, yeah, 27-13, sorry. That's 27 sorry, I, points unanswered. Sorry, I was getting... So, so, we've got another one from Gene Miller. Chester Romans, 20, balls, 14. The balls led at half-time, 14-8. to eight. So, it looks like a good comeback on... Coming for the Chester Romans there, and the Apache will be looking to do the same thing. So, unsportsmanlike conduct on the extra point there. Yeah, so Bristol unsportsmanlike conduct. So 15 yards on the kickoff. So they're kicking off from the halfway line. <clears throat> I am wait. I'm begging that someone puts this South Wales Bournemouth score in. I am begging because Bournemouth can come back, and the Apache looking to do the same here. So and Bristol they, go with two returners this time on this kick return, 42 and number seven. Newton Grain, we know he's got a big foot. Bang, and he's done it again. 
And that's going to go out the back of the end zone. That'll be first and ten for Bristol on their own 20 yard line. Ooh. So, oh, oh, Chubb has won. You're an absolute, absolute hero. Please, thank you so much. Not put it in yet. They're waiting for an update, and he's going to put it through there. So here we go then. First and ten from their own twenty. Dre K's with the last touchdown there for the Saints. Well, maybe not the last touch, but the most recent touchdown for the Saints. Let's oh. see what the Apache do here. Wing back comes in motion. Run up the middle. And then swarmed by that Oxford defence. Just a mess in the middle of the field there. Just a mess. So second down with no gain. Apologies, they've given them a one yard gain there. Oh, yeah. Wooly, what do you think the Apache need to do here? I mean, actually, I might I might be able to answer that myself. Don't turn the ball over. That's <laughs> it. Like, I wish I could so give you... We've sorry. got the motion. Two receivers to the left, single receiver. Now we're in trips on the left. No. It's a QB keeper. QB's been forced out of the pocket. He's running and he steps out of bounds. The speed of the Oxford defensive line on that snap was fantastic. The Oxford defensive line know that Leicester can run the ball. He's very, very quick. Very quick. And he does progress the ball. But I'd say maybe only two bringing up a third and six. Hey, third and six, I'm right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep, third and six, I'd say. So two wide receivers, we've got a tight end on the left, we've got that, that wing back, close to the line, right of the quarterback. He's carrying it at number seven, seven, and he's tackled there. Tries to Follow step tackle on by man, 89. But, but that is Ben Harris. Sorry, 99. The Ben Harris, number 99 of the Saints. I have had the displeasure of playing against Ben Harris in the past, and he is fast, and he is deceivingly strong. It's and he gets the first down. But it is going to be a first down for number seven, Luke Holloway of the Apache. Yeah, I'm... I said this last week. I did I did train with the Oxford Saints because bef before this whole streaming thing came around, I was going to join them and I was up against Ben Harris and I hated it. Every hated it. And Ed Green just crunching some Oxford Saints players for a gain of two. Did you say that's a gain of two? Yep, gain of two. two. Chubb one keeping us all informed that it's still the same score for Bournemouth versus South Wales, which was 13 to 7 late in the game. The game's not over yet, but the score remains the same. So here we go then, second and eight. Trips right for Bristol, single receiver on the left. Leicester, keeps it. Leicester throws it, great ball, but that is defended by 44 of the Saints. Well, there is a player down for the Saints. It is Leicester 19, he's popped back up to his feet and next to where he was laying there was a flag on the play. Alex Rock's breaking up the pass there, but let's see what the referees are going to say about this. Oh, 
Roughing the passer. And a roughing the passer pen there for the Saints. Going to be 15 yards for the Apache now. And it seems to be that Nathan Lester, number 19, is out. And Luke Holloway, number seven, is in his place. And Luke Keeps Holloway it. running right. Looks like he's got back to maybe the either the line of scrimmage or one yard behind. Gonna be that's now the third quarterback in for the Apache. So second and ten from about the 47 yard line. Leicester number 19 is back in the game. So two tight ends there for Bristol. Man in motion, turns up field. Leicester throws it short there, caught by number four. And it looks like they're going to spot him just past those chains as John Carroll catches that ball. Yep, first down. Seems to be the Apache are being a bit smarter now. They're Mixing bit, it up nicely. They, they certainly are. <laughs> Excuse me. So on the 40-yard line now, first and 10. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Single back, number eight. Number 42 comes in motion to trips. And he goes back to the other side. And Lester's going to run. keeps to the left. To the left, he's looking, to, out. he's looking to throw it. But number 42 of the Oxford Saints. One of, the, one of the officials is down, but he's straight back up. Matt Kersey chasing down Nathan Lester, number 19, of the Apache. Second down and five. Line judge got caught up in that just a little bit. He's up and he's okay. So here we go then, second and five. Tight end on the wing back to the right, single back, number eight. 42 comes in motion across the field. Throws number Count eight by both. number eight and, and he's he stopped again. Oh no, he breaks through just at the end there. And he runs into a lot of Oxford Saints there, a lot of big boys and just absolutely slams into them. Looked like a design play, play to the right there, but then he broke back on the counter and made a few extra yards after the tackle. So, third and three, third and four. We hear the Saints sideline saying that watch for this hard count. So two running backs, tight end to the right. Carry by number seven to the right. And Luke yeah, they Holloway. spot that, he's got close to the line. <laughs> Luke Holloway punching it through there, but we do have a Saints player down. So the result of the play is a first down. They're just saying to the injured player there. Out. 
Andy Smith keeping us in the loop. 39-22 at the Cambridge Cats. Six minutes left in the fourth quarter over in Cambridge for that game. So Solent looking to make a comeback on the end of the late in that game then. Number 55 <coughs> being carried off the field. So first down for Bristol on the 29 yard line. So big number 89 lines up as a running back next to the quarterback, number eight behind him. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. And Ed Green up there, the middle. running up there, runs it. And the driving Apache the just driving Ed Green there. Driving Ed Green for a, just to get a bit more distance. The ball's on the 21 yard line. Second down and two. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to move into the final quarter here in Oxford with the score standing 27 to 13 for the Oxford Saints. I thought we were going to get a close up view of a touchdown on that then. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to put the multi cam set up to work, but. Oh. Wind's picking up a little bit here now. Still all to play for here in Oxford. The Saints 14 points away from tying this game. And they are going to start Q4 deep inside Oxford Territory. <laughs> so here we go then, second and two, 21 yard line. Bristol got number 89 in the backfield with number eight. Looking to pass. And Lester throws it up. And that's caught by complete. number seven. And that looks like we're going to wait for a signal here. And there it is. And there we go. And another TD here for the Apache is there looking to edge this out ever closer, but the first play of the fourth quarter results in a touchdown for the Apache. <laughs> and so easy go, yeah, he is going for the kick for the extra point. Weather's just changing a little bit now, starting to rain slightly. Is the snap, good snap, good kick, low but through. There we go, another seven points. So Bristol break that streak, long streak of um, Oxford scoring. Still time for the comeback. Oh, 
one of those things about special teams, you hear somebody shout missing too, but they never tell you where those two people are missing from. So Stankham and Drake back for the Oxford Saints on this kickoff. Deep kick, high. It's fielded up the middle. Number 88, Stankham for Oxford on the return there. So first and ten on the Oxford 24-yard line. So spread formation for Oxford, number 36 in the backfield with Ferreira, man in motion. So number 36 for Oxford up the middle on that dive play. Momentum definitely swinging back into the Apache's favour. Yeah, sorry about this. sorry about the wrong score for a second there, guys. I had to go and put the water protection onto our equipment because it is getting wet here. And unfortunately, it started raining down just as that kick was happening into Sweet the hands of 80. Number 80. Very little gain there. So flag on the play. So that was a second and 13. We're just waiting to see what the flag was. So face cage against the defense there, 15 yard penalty, first down. Moves the sticks for Oxford. And that's gonna set them up here. <clears throat> Automatic first down. Yeah, it should be an automatic first down. I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the down marker to change. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so, sorry about that, guys. I had to waterproof it as the uh, as the, as the kick was going off. So yeah. I do I do uh, I do apologise for not immediately putting up the uh, correct score. So slight delay while they get the change right because of that. 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. So here we go then. Oxford again with that spread formation. Number 18 in the backfield now. Ferreira. Oh, Jimmy Boston out. It's picked up by Bristol. Oh, and a great, great turn of events here for the Apache. Oh. It's number 15 for Bristol. Darius Lynch there on the pickup and the return. First and goal. Looks around about the nine yard line. So big swing again, another turnover. And number 60 for the Saints there, preventing that going for 
a touchdown. But the Apache are now back in it. So, two receivers to the left. Kibby keeps. Unless he's got his the direction. Move, he's got the spin. Just 28 to beat. Oh! Let's see what the call is here. It's short of the touchdown. So number 28 there has delayed him enough for some assistance to come along and stop that touchdown. Look to be about on the four yard line now. So second down. So the momentum swing now, has it gone into Bristol's favour? Two wide receivers, tight end and a wing back tight on the left. Number eight takes it, cuts yeah, outside. Green. Solid tackle there, number and 44. They're celebrating as if it's a touch on the Apache sideline. We're waiting they're for conferring. a call. Waiting to see what they... Well, the Apache is setting back up, so it looks like that did not go through for the about the one yard line. And the Apache, uh, the, the, I don't want to jinx them, so I'm not going to say it, otherwise, I'll get shouted at. High, High snap, snap, bad snap, swarm defense. Oh my lord, Mateus Greco there again, and it's going to be a fourth down. I mean, obviously, you're, they're probably going to go for this. But this is a great stand here from the Saints defense. Yeah, the high snap there. Number 19. We're having a change of personnel here, so. Are they kicking the field goal? It looks like they it are. Looks they, like they, they are. The referee the, signal for and the, the Apache going for the field goal. This is this is a, a, obviously the Saints don't want, didn't want it. It's only a short yard kick. It's on the nine. Bad snap, and he's tackled there by number five. Oh, what a turn of events here for the Oxford Saints. What could have been a disaster has they've got they've got the ball back there deep in their own yardage, but but man, what a turn of events and what a display by the Oxford Saints defense to hold the line. to hold the line and prevent another Aztec score, Aztec, Apache score, from going on the board. So that drive came off of the eighth turnover we've had in this game. And ladies and gentlemen, we can confirm from Chubba One, he's been keeping us all, keeping us in the, in the loop. Actually, we'll wait for this play to go off before I tell you. So, Oxford spread formation. Dump off pass to number 29, he jumps a player. And Ofo looks to jump a man. Chubba one telling us that South Wales Warriors win their first game 13 to seven over the Bournemouth Bobcats, shaking this division up. And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, if the Saints come away with a win here today, then this division is wide open, wide open. It's only the start of the season, but if everybody's going to be doing like this, it's going to be a round robin of win-loss. It's going to make it very interesting then we come down to the wire. Looking like so, a loss of a few, a few inches there. Ferreira's got the ball, bit of a low snap. Ferreira dumps it off. He looks to have been swarmed there. Apache being very, very aggressive on defence, and that's exactly what they need. Andy Smith keeping us in the loop with that Prem score. The Cambridgeshire Cats win their first game 45 to 20 over the Solent Thrashers. Very interesting. What an interesting result. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, Sports Hank will be back in Southampton for the Thrashers versus the Blitz. Mm. I won't be there. But Woolly will be there. Oh, but I won't be there. Because they're making. Really important game, that one for Solent now. So, third and 11, maybe third and 12. 
Ferreira looking to pass, rolls out, deep pass down the sideline, but deep pass, not going anywhere. But Ferreira himself is going to have to be the one that clears this ball away. I, I'm not, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility to say that the Oxford Saints' chances of winning this game do rest almost solely on the shoulders of Francisco Ferreira, number 12. Yeah, we've seen some bad punts and there's a few better punts in the first half. So he really wants some distance to give his defence some room to work with. But ladies and gentlemen, it is starting to... It's The rain's not massive, but the rain is here. So the ball could be a bit wet, but we're going to be looking to see what Ferreira can do here in his own end zone. And there we go. There was several players... There was a long delay there, and I saw several players move, but they've thrown the flag for a false start now. And the Saints are being marched backwards. Making it even even more difficult for Ferreira to get this ball off. So it's on the ten yard line where he needs a really, really good kick. Oh. Let's see what he can do. Good snap. Good drive. And it's a Ball's good field ball. around halfway line though, number seven. Holloway's got it, number seven. He runs into some Oxford Saints, he runs into and unfortunately for Holloway, I want to say he's number seven, is it? Yeah, Luke Holloway, number seven. He ran into a few Bristol Apache players as well. Yep. But considering, considering he was backed up in his own end zone and he just done a drive at quarterback, fair play to number 12 for the Oxford Saints, Francisco Ferreira. So it looks like the Bills are on around about the 45, 44 yard line. So let's see what Bristol can do on this drive. Spread formation. Number eight still in the backfield. Ed Green. Looks for the swing pass, tipped. So a little bit of post play action there. And another flag. So my prediction here was we're going to have an unnecessary roughness of number 70 on the defence. And then I think there were words afterwards when the referee threw the second flag. So the referees are conferring. You may not be aware, all the referees have got a little card. They keep track of everything in the game. Scores, timeouts, the, the, the serious fouls, and also if they've given an unsportsmanlike on individual players. And these are checked at the end of the game to make sure everybody agrees. I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of laundry on the field. Yep. I'd say the referee threw two flags there himself, so let's see what the calls are. So there was the there was the, he pushed the guy over after the play, which they've called a late hit. And then the number 70 obviously said something to the referees as he walked off. So two 15-yard penalties. And that's which will bring up a first down. And that's gonna be big for the Apache. It's strange it's strange it's happening because the because something similar happened in the Peterborough Royals versus Leeds Chargers game. I couldn't quite believe it. A 30-yard penalty, but it's happened today in Oxford. And the Oxford Saints, uh, I don't want to say, but they're sort of becoming a bit unglued. They're becoming a bit unglued. They, they came away from the first half with that W, but the first half wins 
don't matter unless you're I mean unless you're betting on something like that but you can't bet on this and that's going to put the Apache in oh what was that the 13 13 yard line it looks like yeah Oxford had a great stand last time but can they do it again so we've got that wing back 89 eight runs up the middle behind the block good pressure and Ed Green absolute powerhouse for the Apache pushes that ball and TJ Ajay there is in, in this, the full back position leading the blocks he, he leads the field now number seven comes in so second and about four Let's see what Br Bristol can do on this and cannot Oxford get the stop again. Jet sweep from number away. seven onto the outside. And Holloway's got the space. Oh! But that's going to be a, a TD touchdown. for the Apache. And they are one kick away from tying this game. They're one kick away from tying this game in the fourth. So, we're going for the kick. James Baines going for the kicker. Going for the kicker? He is the kicker with Luke Holloway to hold. Good snap and hold. Balls up and through. And the game is tied in the fourth. Apache definitely having the momentum in this second half. The Saints need to come up with an answer. And even those... You know, silly penalties. Ugh. That 30 yard penalty has. We, oh. we saw it last week with Oxford, they gave away penalties, and the previous week in the Northampton Giants game, both teams got into good position and then penalties. So, Oxford need to keep their discipline now on this drive. The Apache have been definitely more aggressive after they'd come out of this second half, this first half down, and they're gonna to wanna to keep that pressure up if they wanna get this ball back and put some numbers on the Saints. So the first quarter was Bristol game, second and third quarters to Oxford, and the fourth quarter is swinging back Bristol's way. Who's gonna get the final? So Drake Hay with a return. Cuts to the Jukes outside. Duke's man, but he cannot get round number 15 of the Apache, Darius Lynch. So let's see where they're going to be setting up. Looks like it's Oxford's own 23 yard line. Next time the refs are up this end, we will try and get a time check for you, ladies and gentlemen. So, trips right for Oxford, single left. And Ferreira Looks like that was a backward pass recovered by Ofo. Yep. See if the chains are, and the chains are going to go back. Yeah, so they've ruled it a backward pass. It hit the ground, and then Ofo dived on it. That's been the story of the Oxford passing game. They've, they've been bubble screens and the little swing passes for a very little gain. So, let's see what they can do on second and long. Spread formation. 29 in the backfield, Ofo. Ferrer looking to throw out another one. It was a pass to Ofo that was incomplete out of his hands. 
and the Apache are absolutely humming now, but this, the Saints need to keep going. Momentum has affected the Saints. Ferreira running to get the play. So number 12's come to the sideline to get the play. He's going in. We'll probably have to hurry. Delay of game penalties. Just it's, they won't be wanting that in this position. And they certainly won't be wanting a burner timeout either. Yeah. So on the third down on their own 18-yard line. Need to get out to around about the 35. Ferreira's running. He runs outside. He's looking to throw. Oh. oh. He tried, and Ferreira tried that to get that off to number 18. I don't even think that number 55 for the Apache even knew that that ball was coming towards him, Adam Davies, but he manages to get his body in the way to force an Oxford punt with Ferreira back in the backfield to punt as well. And the Saints seem to be putting themselves in a position where this is going to get dicey, even dicier as they go towards fourth quarter. A low snap. Ferreira Good manages punt. to get it off high. It takes an Oxford bounce, but it's still inside their own half. And it goes back to what we were talking about last week with the Oxford field positioning. And it seems to be that that monster has not yet been conquered by the Saints. Though we are, we, that 30 yard penalty, oh boy. Oh boy, was that damaging to the Saints. Of course, got to remember, we're gonna to have to use, that there's no overtime. There is no overtime measurement. This, this could end in a draw. And we I mean, were talking about wins and losses. That draw could make a very interesting end of table analysis. When we come to the final count ups at the end of the season. There have been a few draws already in the season. It's still very early yeah. on in the season, but there's been a couple. <clears throat> so, two receivers to the left, 89 at tight end on the right, and number eight, Ed Green at running back. Nathan Lesser in the QB. And in motion. Pitch to number eight. Weaves around. Big number 64 for Oxford on the tackle there. And grabbed Ed, an ankle and held him. And Ed Green is, he's, he's a big boy and he's pushing, absolutely pushing to get, to get these yards with every single play. So he's, second down and five. And he splits the down markers. Yeah. All of this fourth quarter play has been at that end of the field. We haven't been able to it get a time check from the referees. It certainly has been. Momentum on the Apache side. So two receivers to the left, number 89 in a little wing back position. Let's Jimmy run rolls out left, looking to throw. Oh, oh, broken just, up there by number five for Oxford. At 42, his fingertips were just so close to that ball. If this was, you know, the NFL in like the 80s or 70s, the stickum that he may have had <laughs> on his hands there would have allowed him to catch it. But uh, we don't have stickum. We don't have stickum here. But and that's going to be a third and five. He, he is wearing gloves, but obviously he's not wearing them. So 42 now comes out, so third and five. Third and five, Ed Green is looking to be in the backfield. We know he can punch through and get those yards. And it's to Green again, but he goes left. 48 of the Saints grabs him, but that looks like Green's gonna have enough for that first down. Ah! Well, I'd say that he's got that, but he's he's just barely got that. If they give it, if the, dependent on the knee, dependent on the knee, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, there it goes. It is a first down. Yeah. There we go. And Ed Green again, just being able to punch through this Oxford Saints defensive line. So here we go then. First down on the 35-yard line.
Now to Holloway. Good tackle by number four there for number, a very, very short game. <laughs> number four from the Saints sliding. Sliding down. We've got number 29 in at running back now. Nicholas Noonan. Rob so Coates. trips right, number 29 Noonan in the backfield. Rob Coates with the tackle there, the sliding tackle. Second down and 10. Leicester goes left. He's looking to throw. Throws it away, out of bounds. And the referee's got, got a flag. And there's a flag. It's going to be late hit on the quarterback. The quarterback has thrown the ball away. Discipline. So there's, we're just going to have to swap cameras just for a second here. Let's get all this plastic rain shielding off of it before the play starts. I know that's not you want. You, I know that's not what you want me to commentate, but that's the reality. So roughing the passer there, and that's going to be another damaging penalty for the Oxford Saints defence. Yeah, got to hold their discipline now. We can hear the Apache sideline with coaches saying, use that momentum, and he could not be more right. So two receivers to right, single receiver to the left, eight up the middle, powers oh. forward, swarm of white bodies around him. And Ed Green just punching that up there. So, player down on the play. Look, a gain of about four on that play. And it seems to be that when the ball gets put into Ed Green's hands, he can, that, like, that, that might just be click four yards, click five yards, three yards. That's exactly the sort of player you want on your team. Four yards every play, you're going to win a game. There's a Bristol player just receiving some attention. Greg Musto commenting, discipline cost in the Saints, and you, yeah. you'd have to say that, that is 100% correct. Let's see if I can find some, uh, some, some delicious scores whilst um, the Apache player is being attended to. So number 65 there for Bristol being helped off is up on his feet. As we as we saw there, 13-7 to the South Wales Warriors over the Bournemouth Bobcats. We are back in oh, thank God Willie's got my camera. Somerset 31, Berkshire Renegades nil. The Wyverns coming away with a big win there. Seems to be that the Her that Hereford, the Hereford Stampede have come back and seem to be winning now against the Ouse Valley Eagles. 6.14 the time call here in Oxford in a game that stands 27-27 with the Apache second and six into Saints territory. So, trips to the right. 
Single back. Lesser got the ball. Throws it out right. Caught by number five. Gets pushed out of bounds with two Saints players around him. We'll be able to get you back to the other camera momentarily. Let's have a look here. Beautiful. There we are. Thank you for bearing with us, ladies and gentlemen, for that. Third and three. three. Yeah. Yes. Get in. Third and three here. Almost Third. it. So we've got tight end on the left. Number 89 is a wing back. Carry up the middle from number eight. 64 for Oxford on the tackle there. And Ed Green again, punching it through. Ed Green, it, he's, the, he's the name that's been on my mind when I think about this, when I think about this Apache onslaught. And that's gonna be another first down for the Apache deep inside Oxford Saints territory with perhaps sub six minutes left in this game. So on the 12 yard line, first down and goal. Uh, first down and 10, so they can get a first down. We've seen the Oxford, system, the Oxford State Saints do <laughs> offensive stand before. Can they manage it again? A result for Oxford here would be three points going on the board. So we've got trips right, single. Oh, excuse me, single back. Lester's got the ball. Lee throws it. Pass out to number ten. Number ten's got it. He dropped it. Oh, did he drop it? Oh. It looked slightly behind him. He had to adjust to try and get the catch, but didn't make it. Second down and ten. Freddie Marshall, the intended receiver there for number 19, Leicester. So, trips left, number 10 on the right. Ed Green at running back. Second and ten. Looks like Ed Green. Off. Oh, and that's a big, and that's a big sack from 48 of the Saints. Oh, the QB turned there to put the pitch to Ed Green, but he'd already left. Big sack. Phil Hansen there with a big, big, big play. That's going to put the. That's going to put Third the and 21. Third and 21. That's going to put the Apache back. That could be a game changer from Hansen there. See what they can do on this. What can Let's Leicester see. cook up? Two receivers to the left. Long pass out to number 10. Oh, oh, number, oh, number 10's down. Oh, and that's a non contact injury. Oh. oh. You never, ever, ever like to see, like it's it's sort of different when it's a contact injury, but when it's a non-contact injury, that's, oh. Oh no. Yeah, it was, a, it was looking to be a nice post pattern there, and he just, he pulled himself up and went straight down. Oh no. He does walk. Does he walk off? Uh, yeah, he has. He's got up off the floor off of his own power and he's walked off the field.
So the ball's on the 23 yard line, the 24 yard line. 24 yard line and it's going to be fourth. Holloway is in the backfield. He is the holder. Well, to be fair, Luke Holloway's actually a lot of things for this Apache side, so. But you do have Baines, number 22, who is the kicker. So around about a 34-yard field goal attempt this here. This is going to be good. Let's see what Baines can cook up here. Good snap. Good snap, the ball's down and the kick is low. But through! Uh, that, oh. What a kick. What a kick. And Baines has put the Apache in front once again. However, I would say only conceding three points there, that's good for the Saints. Their fourth quarter has not been spectacular, yeah. but there's a chance. There's a chance to take this game for the Saints. There's even there's more of a chance to tie. They've got a good kicker in number 82, Newton yeah. Grain, and it could come down to his foot, but the Saints are going to get the ball back as it stands 37, 20, 30, 27, not 37, 30, 27 for the Apache. How long is left in the game? Ooh. I'm we'll unsure. It's, it's, it's going to be under about three minutes. Yeah. Again, the referee who keeps the clock, the line judges down on the far end of the field. Lane Baines, drive. Baines with a good boot. Drake Drake Hayes underneath, underneath it. it. Runs to the outside. And Kay's bringing that ball back. Good, good bit of field. Let's see where it's going to end up. Let's see where they put the sticks. Ferreira and the offense is back. So they're out at their own 39 yard line. So good return there. Ferreira not having the best fourth quarter in the world. I will say that now. So spread formation for Oxford. Ferreira's looking Ferreira's around. back to pass, he rolls out to his right, he's running, steps out of bounds. Ferreira with a gain of about two. Two? Yeah, two yards. Yeah. If you hear me asking that as a question, that's because I like to say it, I like to guess, and then Mike will tell me. I'll say again, we are watching it, looking at an angle, so you may see a better view than we do, but... Oh, dearie me. So, trips right for Oxford, single receiver on the left. Ferrer immediately runs that left. Dumps Pass is off. dumped off there. Yeah. So we haven't had the two minute warning yet, so there's still plenty of time. I believe Oxford have got all of their timeouts. I think Bristol used one, didn't they, early? So. Third and eight. It's looking like for the Saints. They've got to capitalise here if they want any chance of taking this victory at home here in Oxford. So spread formation now, single back, number 18 Cowley goes in motion across the field. Ferreira's looking to throw again and this fumbled. It'd be interesting to see what's going on there. Let's see, you've got Now that's interesting because QB's arm was going forward. Let's 
The Apache offense has come but on no, the field. The referees have said it. Yeah. So okay. First and ten on the 40 for Bristol. <clears throat> and turnovers again being the name of the game here in Oxford. And the Saints' fortunes have been reversed. They give one up deep in their own territory with not much time left. You've got a man in motion. Give it a 49. 49 with the ball. Big rumble there. And that's a big that's a big man to be carrying that ball. But he's gonna gain some yardage. Ashley Huggins there with oh, the carry. Oh, Ashley Huggins, eh? Ashley Huggins, another Gloucestershire Gladiators coach. With three of them. Three yes. of them being on the pitch for the Apache. Second and five. So two receivers to the left, they've got the little tight wing back at number four, just off the line of scrimmage to the left of the quarterback. And it's 49 rumbles again. again. All there by the defence. <clears throat> and Huggins slammed down by 64 of the Saints. Tom Beauchamp there, number 64 with that solid tackle. Third and five. Third and five for the Saints. For, for the Apache. I'm looking around for number eight. So two receivers left. Tight end number four on the left. QB keeps it, rolls out to his left. Down by Ben Harris. He was looking to pass, comes back to his right. Number 70, flag on the flag play. back. And number 19, it just takes a knee in front of number 70. There is a flag on the play. It's going to be interesting to see what this is. <clears throat> number 19, Lester there. That play lasted a long, long time. He was running around, dodging people left, right and centre. But it's going to be a fourth down. Well, depending on what it is, of course. Well, depending on the flag. Well, the interesting thing there is that if, if they decline it, then this is in the same distance he kicked the field goal previously. There we go. So, the penalty is, the holding penalty is declined by the Saints. And the two minute warning is on the clock. Leicester number 19 is still on the field. Three timeouts for the Saints. Kicking unit for the Apache is not coming on, or not as of right now. There we go, the kicking unit is coming onto the pitch with Baines making a kick from about this distance to put the Apache ahead. So this is a 35 yard attempt. A 35-yard attempt. I say the last one, it just barely crossed over the... Uh, uh, hang on, what are we going to... And there's going to be a timeout for the Apache. Be very interesting. Kicking unit stays on. I will say, if you remember correctly, number seven Holloway, who is the holder, was acting quarterback for a while whilst um, number 19 Leicester was out. I'm, I'm not saying that it's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just saying that if it does, I might be the smartest man alive. And he's but had a good few yards on the running carries as well. He so certainly has the done. The jet sweeps. So, here we go then, after the timeout. Better kick. What a ball from Baines. And that is going to put 
That is going to put the Apache ahead by six points. The two-minute warning has been and gone. Oxford have got three timeouts left and they're about to get the ball back. This game is not out of the hands of the Oxford Saints just yet. But this is going to be a make it or break it drive for the Saints in what has been an impressive performance. But you cannot say that the fourth quarter from the Oxford Saints has been particularly inspired. But they've got to get inspired and they've got to get inspired quick because this game is going out of their hands. So they're going to need the touchdown and the extra point. I want to sort out the camera there. We got it. We so got here it. we go then. Baines looking to boot it again. Bosh. What a ball from Baines. Dre Kays underneath the catch it. Catches it again. He's going straight up the middle. Number 10 from the Apache. Number 30 from the Apache. Swallows. Absolutely swallows him up there. George Boys. So around about the 22 yard line. First and 10, let's see what they can do on this drive. The Saints are starting deep in what potentially could be the final drive of what has been a fantastic game here in Oxford. And I think no matter what happens, people are gonna be looking at the Oxford Saints a little bit differently Good snap. Ferrer's got the ball. Look at the throw. He throws it out. It was aimed for number 84, but it was rather short. Second and 10. The Saints would like people to be speaking differently about them with a team with a win. However, I think it will happen regardless. And Ferreira's in mo and Ferreira's running. He's looking to get something. Flag on the flag. play. So we'll just oh. see what happens. It was a flag downfield as the QB was scrambling. Let's see what this could be. And a holding penalty on the Apache is going to bring the Saints down the field. And an automatic first down. And an automatic first down. Right, so, Oxford coming out. The spread formation. Moving number 29. And Ferreira's got the ball and he's swallowed up by 22 of the Apache. Solid tackle there. James Baines, the kicker. Absolutely hammering Ferreira there. James Baines, the cornerback who also kicked. Let's well, give it <laughs> That's true, that's true. But James Baines has put a, a fair few points. And timeout Oxford called. I think I hear one, two, four remaining. That sounded about the right to me as well. One, two, four remaining. Second, and I'm gonna say 14. I agree. For the Saints. The Saints are going to need some screamers here. They're going to need to reach deep into their bag of tricks and pull something out here if they want to leave Oxford today with a win. 
So spread formation again. Hard count there. Free play. Oh, Dre Kays. That ball was so close to Dre Kays, but everybody stopped, but no flags. Oh, there it comes. It's very late. There we go. Dre Kays. It seemed to be that the the Oxford Saints offense did not realize that they could have a free play there. Time froze for a second. Yeah. But Dre Kays managed managed to get off. He was close to getting that ball. So, five yard penalty, still second down for Oxford. I have. Yeah. And that's going to bring so the down nine marker. Yards to go on this play. That's going to bring the down marker about back the inside the yard chains. line. Pass to Drake again. Seems to be a bit of a jerk motion there from Dre Kays. I'm not saying anything, but it's third and third and ten. It's a lot. It's a long nine. It's a, it is a long nine. I was about to say there's a there's a couple of inches shaved off that ten, but not too much. So big play now for Oxford. So, same spread formation. Ferreira's looking to throw. Pass and again outside to number 18, uh, Cowley. Over the head incomplete. of 18. Over the head of 18, and that brings up fourth and 10 for what could be the last Oxford Saints play of this game. They need something here, they need a miracle. Do the Saints. Timeout called Oxford. That's exactly what I would do. Give everyone a chance to breathe. Give everyone a chance to get their heads right for this drive. Not for this drive. This play. This play. Yep. This play. This play decides who wins and loses this game. Straight up. This this play. Yep. Well, no. Well, no. Because they could get just get a first down, but that'd be boring, wouldn't it? <laughs> if they've got to get the first down. There you go. So that's, it's as simple as that. There get the you go. first down, they've got more chances. If they don't get the first down, I think it's going to be victory formation for Bristol. Oh, 100%. Well, uh, what a spectacular game, though. What a spectacular game. Apache coming back to put themselves in the lead. The, the Saints coming out and putting on points that I don't, even, I don't think people thought that the, the Saints were capable of doing. No offence to the Saints. As here we are. They line up, ladies and gentlemen. Ferreira in the backfield. Ofo. Trips left. Here we go. Deep pass outside to Kay. Oh! He went up and for it. Incomplete pass. And Dre Kays almost had the ball in his hand and it seems to be that the Oxford Saints are going to leave here today with a loss. However, what a performance. We're gonna... Oh, what a game. We'll get into it in a second, ladies and gentlemen. We're just gonna... Yeah, the performances have been evenly matched today. I think both teams have got really good running games that they haven't used as much as they could. They've relied a lot on the short passing plays. Solid work from the Oxford defensive line on stopping the runs. So, Bristol come out. The, the two back formation with 89 and 8 in the backfield, two receivers to the left. Number eight takes it up the middle. And he's met solid. 
Number 44 for Oxford. Straight into 44. Apache seem to be running plays until the clock stops. They've signaled they're going to talk, uh, Bristol. We're going to take the knee on this play now. So, Tebs, lots of interesting performances today, but MVP time. MVP time it certainly is. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, for the Bristol Apache, he's on the field right now, standing behind number 19 Leicester, Ed Green, number eight. Yeah, I agree. He's solid running all day. He, he's made those good gains. He's... Now, that's not the end of the game. We've got a timeout, Oxford. Oh. OK. So. OK. So that was Oxford's final timeout. So I think this knee out will end the game for definite this time. But yeah, Ed Green, solid runs up the middle. Some of his counter plays and he's made broken for tackles for the extra yardage and of course the long run for that touchdown. Yeah, definitely number eight for the Apache here. We're waiting for the final whistle before we put this one into the books. Their hands shaking, and the ladies and gentlemen, the Apache pull off a comeback against the Saints, ending this game 33 to 27 in an absolutely spectacular game. Absolutely spectacular. Awesome game. I hope everybody's enjoyed it at home. It's gone backwards oh, and forwards. I'd certainly hope so. Number eight for the Apache is our, our MVP, Ed Green, managed to punch it through. Getting four, five yards every single time, making it so much easier for the Apache. However, well, there's no however, but it would be it would be wrong of us to not say that there are some MVPs on this Oxford sideline as well. There have been some absolutely beautiful, beautiful, crispy performances from the home side here, who I'm sure are going to be unhappy, but when they look back at this film, there's a lot to take away considering we saw them last week 35 to 3 against the Hertfordshire Cheetahs. Now 27 33, a loss to the Apache. <clears throat> the game changed for the Saints with number 12, Francisco Ferreira. Yep. The QB of the Reading Knights have come into this game and he spun it completely on its head. Completely on its head and making it very. Very difficult, absolutely fantastic performance from number 12. Defensive standpoint for the Saints throughout the entire first half. We were saying number 23, Mateus Greco. Yeah. Number 23, Mateus Greco's done this. He's around. He's he's doing bits for the team. No, I'm doing a piece of camera, so no. No. Oh, I'm doing something. Yeah, so apologies for the interruption. Oh, excuse me. So, yeah, so 29 0 as well, some solid running. Great work from the Oxford defensive line at, at times, really stuffing the run. So as we say, next week we'll be back at Solent for the Solent Thrashers versus London Blitz game. Thrashers being beaten by Cambridge today in an interesting result. We'll wait and see what the other results are around the league. Sorry, Mike, I was interrupted. <laughs> yeah, just saying it'd be interesting to see with the... Um, Cambridge Cats beating the Thrashers, the other results around the league, see how that... We said also within this league that these two teams inhabit, 
Bournemouth Bobcats seem to be coming away from it as the victors. 13-17 loss for the Bournemouth Bobcats against the South Wales Warriors. Very, very interesting. And I'd, I'd say, even though this is going to chalk it down as a loss for the Saints, I feel like people are going to look at the Oxford Saints a little bit differently now. Fantastic game here, ladies and gentlemen. We will hopefully be able to grab some players from both squads. <clears throat> but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to talk to the folks and I'm going to go and try and grab some players for us. Sure. So just as we allow the teams to do their end of games. I'm going to try and grab you some of the scores from around the league. So if you just give me one second. Both teams absolutely playing the high. Let's try and get some scores from around the league. This is great. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll read them from how I got them. The Hereford Stampede come back against Ouse Valley, finishing that game 34-27. South Wales Warriors, 13. Bournemouth Bobcats, 7. The Clyde Valley Blackhawks, 62 over the Dunfermline Kings. Somerset Wyverns, 31. Berkshire Renegades, 0. Torbay Trojans, 2. Swindon Storm, 39. East Kent Mavericks 38, Ipswich Cardinals 0. I'm, what was the score? S uh, Colchester 7, Sussex 8. Highland Stags 17 0 up against the Aberdeen Roughnecks at the half. And I believe the Solent Thrashers. Come out in a losing effort, 45 nil to the 45 to 20. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, to the Cambridge Cats, which is a big score for those Cambridge Cats. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, Sports Hank will be back at Solent, as I believe now Solent have lost two in a row: one to the Warriors, one to the Cats, as they welcome the London Blitz at home. <clears throat> We will try and grab some players. We're going to let everyone stretch out before we come and uh, talk to them, have a go at them. No, we're not going to have a go at them. But the point still stands. I'm going to have uh, some water because <coughs> my throat hurts. You don't get this level of coverage with anything else. With anything else, when I'm drinking this water, co-op natural spring water. Good water, good water out of ten. I don't know why I'm saying water, I don't say that. It's water. But what a fantastic game for Oxford. Um, definitely the best I've seen them. That fourth quarter seemed to get away from them. No. How much would one cost? Do I get shipping on it? Huh? Do I get shipping? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's right then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, back next week, Solent versus the Blitz. I won't be there because I want to... Is that a question? Yeah. 
but I don't know if they're saying it as a statement question or... No, that was... Uh, Connor Day, if you could clarify. Sorry, that was, the, that was what we had on our score, on our score page. That's what someone... Uh, had put for Colche for that Colchester game. So if if that's wrong, I I, I apologise, but I'm only I can only um, I can only do uh, I can only tell you what other people have uh, told me in terms of this. You, you're about to tell me something. Wrong camera. Yep. Uh, we've <laughs> interview with the head coach, the Sport Tank MVP, and also. The Apache's own vote for MVP. Oh, very, very good. So, hold on. Let me just make sure that everyone's in shot. <laughs> God, my hands all over the place. <laughs> so, hard-fought victory. Very hard-fought. Were you expecting this from the Saints? Because, I mean, I can say that I wasn't. I was very surprised. Um, in uh, Apache and Saints history, it's always been... Uh, a big old grudge match, so we were expecting that. Um, I think uh, I think we gave ourselves a hard time, but they're, they're a good team, but we gave ourselves a hard time um, and uh, ultimately came back for the win, got ourselves together, regrouped, and um, we got the win, that was that. So what was the, what was the mood going into half-time? Like what was said at half-time to sort of get these players back up and ready to come back out? And also, please don't swear, because I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that, that was probably contained within it. Beep, 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 <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Um, no, no, just uh, a loving bit of guidance. And uh, <laughs> right. yeah, fundamentals right, bit of guidance, a little bit of a telling off, to be fair. Um, yeah. And the boys responded, and here we are. So that's cool. And definitely in the second half, I, I felt that the Apache were a lot more aggressive on defence. Was that something that was discussed, or was it just the players knowing that you have to become more aggressive yeah, 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 when yeah. the Saints are becoming more dynamic when number 12 um, came onto the pitch. Uh, James plays on defence so he can answer that. Uh, <laughs> I would say, yeah, coach's main, main call was being more aggressive. We started playing press um, on the outside, which worked very well. And I'm not sure they completed many passes in the second half, I'm going to be honest. No, I believe, but, I believe the, the quote from someone was couldn't buy a first down, no. unfortunately, for the Saints. So... Our MVP, Ed Green, number eight. We seemed every single play that was in your hands, three, four, five yards every single time. How much of that is, you know, just natural, natural instinct? How much of that is your players pushing you to get those extra yardages? It's definitely the players. Some of it's natural instinct, but 100% my players. I couldn't do anything without my line, my QB, especially the coaches' guidance as well. But essentially, it's down to the O line, in my opinion. That is the best answer I've ever heard. <laughs> O-line win games. The most TV answer. O-line win, ga -line win games. He's, he's, not, he's not just MVP for this game. He might be MVP for the whole year. <laughs> so, with, with the, so with this game now and the result of South Wales versus Bournemouth, where does this put you? I'll tell you now if you don't know. Uh, South Wales won 13-7. to seven. So where does that sort of put oh. the... Where do you think the, the Apache now sort of stand within this division? Uh, competitive. Uh, I think we were competitive. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, competitive. Uh, we were definitely competitive with the Knights. Had a great game there. Uh, a great game here today. Uh, managed to edge this one out as compared to last week. Um, so, yeah, we're expecting the Warriors and Bournemouth to be similar games. Um, and especially, you know, Oxford. You know, uh, when we get them back at our house again. Um, it's going to be the same thing. I think it's going to be a very, very tight division across. There's a lot of good a lot of good coaches, a lot of good players in this division. And it's going to be down to the wire of who's going to squeak on top. So, with that, have you got any more questions, Mike? No, I'm good. No, you... Impressive performance. A swing on the whole, through, the whole way <laughs> yeah. through this game. You know, no, no, no way of telling who was going to win it. But two field goals at trust the end the there. Trust the kicker. Trust the kicker. <laughs> Always trust the kicker. I tell you That's every it. week. As it, you've got a few, you've got a few in the in the chat saying kicker twenty two, <laughs> twenty two. Give it to Baines. Give it to yeah. Baines. Number twenty two. But with that, with that, just if you want to sell your next game, tell them where the people can go for it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be at home. Uh, what's the date? It's two weeks today. Two week, two weeks today at home. SGS College. Uh, we're looking forward to being on our uh, 
our new home field for the first time. Very nice field, ladies um, and gentlemen. It's going to be a special day as well. There's a few uh, things that we're going to put on social media, why that's going to be special. Uh, one being um, it's our 100th game. Uh, as uh, the Apache has been, uh, there's always been the Aztecs, but the Apache since the start is, is the hundredth game, uh, and there's another special moment which uh, we'll we'll divide, we'll provide when uh, when that comes. But yeah, watch the socials and we'll put that out. So with that, this is just one more question from me. Who out of all the uh, Gloucestershire Gladiators coaches who play for the Bristol Apache, who is the best? Um, <laughs> it's live and recorded, coach. Yeah, you can say no comment, but no, no. Um, the, all of them, honestly. Uh, you know, they, they've been great. Uh, Ashley's been. You know, he had a good couple of runs at the air, at the end there. Uh, Captain Jack, Dave, or Flowers, or whatever his name is. <laughs> you've had, I get it all the time. I've been what? calling him Flowers all day, and you've known. Yeah, um, you know, he's done some great job for us as well. Um, yeah. Uh, we've got Ryan from the Gloucester as well. Yeah, Ryan, but, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> I've gone the whole. I've gone the whole thing without slagging off Langston. Ryan, you're not very good at football. <laughs> but but with, with that, thank you very much. Congratulations you. for honestly a spectacular, spectacular game. Wish you all the best luck in the future. Cheers, I'm going to try and grab some of some of these Oxford players if the, if they want to talk to me because sometimes oh, thank you. sometimes thank you. they don't. Cool. But thank you very much, guys. We're gonna we're gonna grab some Oxford players for you just to have a just to have a brief chat with. But thank you very much to the Apache. Now <laughs> during this the commentary, I've I've, I've I've picked up a little bit of not knowledge of rivalry. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm going to tell Tabs this now on. I'm actually an alumni of Reading University. You're a <laughs> joke. You're a joke. <laughs> you didn't play for Reading. No, you... no, I didn't play for them, but one of my degrees comes from Reading. You're disgusting. <laughs> so, Francisco, I, I kept yep. calling you Ferreira, Francisco. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I, I was used to um, having the names the other way around. Oh, but... okay. Okay, so you came on. Yep. Quarterback, your punting wasn't so good in the first quarter. No. You know, a bit high. You, you toes coming up on the punt. Oh, yeah, definitely. So later on, better punts, better position. How do you feel about the game in the overall? Uh, overall, I think it was a positive game for us. Um, I mean, we came off two heavy losses uh, against Rushmore and against the Cheetahs. Um, we, we were in the lead. Um, we let ourselves down. Um, it, it didn't come from, it obviously, good job uh, from the Bristol team but I think more and all it was the team that we were just shooting ourselves in the foot um, but I think we take away a lot of positives from this game yeah we did notice last week that you you got into good field position yeah. and then the occasional bad snap or a, a little bit of miscommunication we did see it from Bristol as well the running back going the other way the quarterback turning left and running back yeah. going right that takes you out of that decent position and then you're having to adjust again. You know, do you feel that you can correct that before your next game? Um, I feel we can. Um, I mean, now we can have some rest uh, to properly look more into the game. Obviously, only having one week between playing Hearts and playing this game uh, was a bit rough. There are some things we could have adjusted that we didn't manage. But obviously now having a bit more space between this game and next game is it Bournemouth, I think. Um, I think we can have a bit more of prep and get ourselves ready to, for the game. Well, I do know that we're actually going to be back here for your oh, next home okay. game. That's um, fine. I'm, I'm not sure what coach thinks about that because obviously he thinks we're a jinx at the moment. So Might be. I mean, no, I mean, yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's great well, to have these live pick streams. pick up on everything, exactly. don't they? You know? Honestly, <laughs> having these live streams, it's great to just span... The, sh the sport in, in the UK just overall so yeah I'm yeah, greatly that's, 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 the, that. that's the idea of Sport Tank is that we want to get as many yeah. games as we can obviously we're all based in the south so we're going to do the south teams a bit more but uh, Steve's working on that and we're going to be yeah. expanding it in the near future as we can yeah and, Te and Tevs knows exactly the, the yeah. memes that are created about the yeah, north yeah. not getting any live streams yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know all about that yeah, stop being good at football, man. It's really annoying. <laughs> nah, no. uh, it's really annoying. I come and I, can't, I have to come down to Oxford, and, and this guy's ripping me for my snaps, which were bad in the game I didn't play. Just, 
I don't know. It was just such a just was such a well-rounded performance. Definitely game changer on the offensive for the Saints. Just I know that Mike's probably already probably asked you this, but surely like I know that it's difficult now because yeah. you have to the game is extended. Do you think this is I think this is a bit of a win? A moral, no, no, a I was just saying I was just saying I think this was a positive outcome for us. Uh, I mean that, that game against Hertfordshire was devastating um, and to come from a loss where it didn't score um, a, a, an offensive touchdown to come out here and score 27 points on a well-drilled team that's such as the Apache I think it's a, a win for us and I think we're definitely going to take um, this out for the next games. And then with the with the Bournemouth Bobcats South Wales Warriors score being 13 to 7 I heard to, that. to I heard South that. Wales where do you think this place is Oxford now? Honestly, I think this division is just really tight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just, I think any at this point, any team can win anything. Uh, I think most games have been really close between all the teams. Um, so I honestly don't know the predictions. I think anything can happen at this point, just like Div 2 Univol. Anything can happen. <laughs> I'm, I'm, with, I'm with that. I'd like you to leave. Uh, okay, fair enough. Cheers. <laughs> so... Proven professional. <laughs> he knows and why. And with that, and he that, knows. He can knows. now piss off. To remind me that my snapping wasn't very good in the first quarter of that game, and that's why. So, what are your thoughts just after a very, very, very impressive game from the Oxford Saints? One, you guys are bad luck. <laughs> so that's two games that you've been with us. You know what can I say? And you're going to come back again? I think we're going to have to ban you pretty soon. Look. I asked this team two things going into this game. That we had to be physical and that we had to be able to main, maintain our focus. So we did one thing. This is the most physical game that this team has played in years. And they did a great job out there against the team, you know, that obviously played well against Rushmore last week. So obviously physical, capable, able. Traditionally, we know, you know, the Apache kind of program. They've always been physical. So, tick. But, I mean, we had a win. And you can't sit there, be two scores up, dominating their offense. Had taken their starting quarterback out of the game. Had almost eliminated their backup quarterback out of the game. And let them come back. And that's pure, just mental preparation and focus. And that's my fault. i got to do a better job of getting these guys to be able to stay focused. To maintain that killer attitude. And when they're out there, to play without being worried. You can be worried about losing, you can be worried about winning, and it's a very strange thing. Well, one of the things we picked up on the commentary last week is that Hertfordshire, their kickoff team, was pushing you back. You were getting no returns, and you were always starting in bad field position. This game, your field position was improving. Drake Hay was making some nice returns. You had those uh, six turnovers... You know, two, two punts that were blocked. You know, it's a fantastic performance from the defence. I'm, I'm a defensive man myself. And your D-line, we, we gave the MVP to their running back, number eight, Ed Green. Because when he did hit, he went through. But your D-line was stopping nearly everything else. Some fantastic sack plays. Yeah. You know, controlling. The quarterback was scrambling a lot of the time. The defence played lights out. I mean, they gave us turnovers. They gave us field position. The special teams played much better. We didn't have any blocked punts. Our punting was good, our snapping was better. From you know all regards, our special teams, we got the PATs down, we got the field goals we want. So all of that, we stepped it up, you know, compared to where we were in the previous games. It's just purely getting over this idea that, you know, when you're up, you've won the game with still two quarters to go. And that's a sign of just a team that one, isn't used to winning, and two, has got a lot of people that haven't played the game before. I don't understand how critical momentum is in this game. So, yeah, our defense, they absolutely slaughtered. Yeah, and one of our feelings is sort of like the way when we're watching it, as I say, I'm a defensive coach most of my time and special teams, that's why I'm always giving them a show. But you go in the spread formation and you've got a really solid back in OFO, but you just didn't seem to be using him enough on the early downs. Yeah. And then you're trying to, you're, you're getting him to carry you on the later downs when you need the bigger yardage. Yeah, it and the just running, seemed to be the running game. You know, he set it up nicely, Vic. We had some good yards in the first quarter with him. Then, of course, to end the first half, he had that nice dump off pass that went all the way for the touchdown. You know, 
So we're sitting there all tied up going into halftime. We come out, the spread is working. We score a beautiful pass to Dan Simmons across the middle, you know, on a crosser. Yep. And a dig pattern comes in, boom, underneath the safeties, over the linebackers, right where it's supposed to be. Fran puts it on target. And then he puts a beautiful ball where nobody else can catch it, but Dre in the corner. I mean, it's classic, classic go to the corner. Everything's working, and then all of a sudden, boom. And that's just, you can't, you can't say you can't do it. It's pure mental, mental focus and preparation and, you know, just the desire to do it. Yeah, because there was that, that there's a little bit of indiscipline as well. Yeah. Um, I, I, as a coach, I hate it, you know. And um, one of the things we picked up is that you, you worked this quite well. And again, it's hard count. We've seen that in all of the games that we've covered so far is the defensive lines are biting so well yep. that... You know, the, everybody's getting hard counts that are working. Yeah. You unfortunately you didn't get the free plays. No. But, but they, I mean, we just shot ourselves in the foot in the fourth quarter with those penalties. I mean, you can't you can't give up sixty yards of penalties just like that, yeah. and expect to get anything. You know, and hats off, their kicker came through two really nice, big, tough field goals that done the job, put us in. You know, and we're always happy. In terms of field position, because we got a great kicker with Joe Newton Grain, so we're always. But you know, the first turnover we had, we were in bloody field goal position. We turned the ball over inside the thirty. Yeah. Three points gone. You know. So we won the turnover battle. I'm not sure we won the penalty battle, which is something we're always on about. Yeah. Is trying to make sure that we end up, you know, not helping them, but we did, and that's why I'm really disappointed today. Is that we upped our game? We were most physical. We were, you know playing tough football and then we just let our brains go into meltdown yeah. so. i've always used the you know players have a brain fart for, the, for no reason it was but, a gas ripper <laughs> 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 but from my own from my own opinion a far better performance from your team despite the score line yeah far better aggression yep yardage yep. play call everything was fantastic yep. so um, we're planning to be back here in two weeks if you let us into a gate honest to god <laughs> Another bloody game with you guys here. We'll be happy to have you. Okay. It'll be a pleasure. Cheers, coach. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thank you. Good off to right, you. Right. you guys too. So I've got, well, I've got one more because Mike was dominating the questions. So this performance and this scoreline, what do you think this paints a picture to the rest of the league of the Oxford Saints as now? No, we're not as shit as they thought we were. <laughs> no, that's not me, ladies and gentlemen. But there, but there we go. But thank you very much, coach. Yeah, thank you, guys. Brilliant. Good to have you here, and thanks for putting our game on. We really appreciate it. Gets the, gets the game out to everybody, and that's what we want, getting the people engaged and playing. And especially in a game that was as good as this game. This game was spectacular. It was a better one than you were with us last time, that's for sure. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cool. Brilliant. Cool. Safe travels. Cool. Thank you. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back with you next week as we head to Solent to cover the Solent Thrashers versus the London Blitz. Yeah, looking forward to that game. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting game. And ladies and gentlemen, let's just paint a picture. I'll try and paint a picture for you for that game. Thrashers now coming off two losses, coming against a strong Blitz side. It's going to be a corker. We will see you there next week. We're going to say thank you very much to the Oxford Saints. Thank you very much to the Bristol Apache. Thank you, everyone that watched. Enjoy your bank holiday, and we will see you next week. Goodbye. Cheers.